Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back. It is us, Dragon's Greed Gaming. You are joining us for a special one-shot tonight as we delve into some very good, good zombie shit. We're going to be playing the Walking Dead RPG from our good friends, Free League. Uh, by the time you see this, our Alien Heart of Darkness campaign will have come to an end. Uh, this week, actually in real life, we had to skip out because three of our five players are missing. And as much as I like to keep the show going, I didn't think it was prudent to play with uh, more than half the cast missing. So um, we'll be back to Alien. But in the meantime, you guys will see this between Alien and probably Blade Runner. We're going to dive back in with the original cast from our first season. And we're going to do the next cinematic. And then we will be back to Alien like I promised. Uh, but since we're going to do the Marine campaign, we, we need to take a break and play some other stuff. And uh, there's just too many good games to play. So anyway, uh, we're going to do the starter scenario from Walking Dead tonight. Uh, and I've got some of my good zombie fanatic friends with us to help out. So uh, as always, uh, check us out over on Facebook for all the latest news of the show. Check us out over on Spreaker and where we host the, the show. Check us out on Apple Podcasts and iTunes. Uh, leave us those five-star reviews. Help us grow the channel. And also, be sure you check us out on YouTube. If you're not watching us there right now, uh, go do that instead of listening. It's much more interesting, I think. And uh, what's the other one? Oh, Patreon, of course. Check out the Patreon if you want to throw a couple extra coins in the Dragon's Horde. If you like the show, which you should... Uh, toss us a few coins, help support the channel, help us grow, and help us, uh, you know, bring more cool shit for you guys to listen to and to watch. Kyle's got some good stuff brewing that's going to be probably coming out this summer, and uh, we're always looking to do more. So, now with Old World in full swing, maybe, maybe we'll get to those battle reports one day, we'll see. <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, a lot going on. So I'm finally all set up in my new place. Just got a few other things to unpack, but the new place is set to go. And uh, I'm pretty stoked, pretty excited. As they say, everything's coming up Millhouse now. There's been no disasters this week after like seven months and, and weeks of just problem after problem. Shit actually went right this week, guys. Can you believe it? It's good to hear. I didn't lose $3,600. I didn't have a fucking breakdown. Uh, I didn't have to buy a new car. It's been it's been great. It's been real fucking great. So, but there was no Dr. Pepper at the fucking grocery store, so I guess it was a disaster. So, anyway, yeah. Uh, so let's do a round table. We've got some new faces. We've got a very still face up here in the corner, which we'll get to in a second. Uh, but uh, as always, Mr. Reliable himself, Sean as always, is one of the only people to show up for the actual original cast, so thank you. Good, sir. Yeah, uh, I just enjoy playing games with friends, so, I mean, if I can make it, I'm gonna make it, you know? Uh, yeah, I'm I'm Sean. I'm uh, playing Gabriel Stokes, the, uh, like, preacher guy. Um, I don't know if he actually did any preaching really in the series, but he, did. he wears... Yeah. Okay, okay. But yeah, he's, he's, you know, dressed in all black, he's bald, he's got, like, a mustache and sort of facial hair, and then uh, that, like, white collar thing that goes on the, the front of their shirts. That's, that's Gabriel. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a little resizing of your camera here, Sean. I think we're, we got a bit too much of a close-up going on, and I think it's, uh, a little intense. Yeah, it's not your fault, it's my fault. I'm still okay. getting this okay. whole thing figured out. Yeah. No worries, no worries. Um... Anyway, I should, uh, I, should yeah. I should I should I should say to the player the listeners before we start, we're going to be using the characters that they provided from the show. So when they did the Kickstarter for this game, in addition to the starter set with obviously pre-gen NPCs and stuff like that, uh, they added character sheets for four of the characters from the show. So we've got uh, Father Gabriel, uh, Michonne, <laughs> Glenn, and Carol. Uh, and I thought that'd be cool because we only had four players tonight. So we're going to be doing the starter set scenario, uh, which is called Golden Ambulance. And we're going to be using the TV show characters instead. So kind of a little bit of an alternate timeline slash alternate history since uh, this scenario, they say, takes place around season three or four, uh, right when the governor shows up. Uh, but obviously, if you're a fan of the show, you know Father Gabriel doesn't show up, I think, until season four 
five or six uh, when they're on the road. So, yeah, we've met him early. He showed up early. So, and Coral and Rick are nowhere to be seen. So, uh, but that's okay. Coral! Yeah. Uh, so tell us, Sean, um, I know you're a zombie fanatic, which is probably why we're friends. Uh, <laughs> and eventually we will have the Year of the Dead on the channel. What's that? Someday. Just keep listening. One one year, we're going to get to it. Someday. Um, yeah. Uh, but tell, tell us, what do you know about The Walking Dead? Have you watched it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? Yeah, uh, I've watched it. Um, I stopped sometime around the Negan stuff going on just because life got busy and I didn't have time to, or, you know, I also didn't have cable. <laughs> None of my friends had cable, so it's like, I couldn't do. But yeah, I watched the first uh, couple seasons. I really liked the first, like, three or four. Uh, those mm -hmm. seemed really good. And then after that, it kind of, kind of, in my opinion, wasn't as interesting. Um, liked Glenn. He was always, like, a stand-up guy. Hell yeah. uh, Shane. Shane was pretty cool, actually. But you know, sometimes you just don't don't get to survive a zombie apocalypse. <sighs> Big rip, Shane. But Big rip, yeah. I did read some of the comics like, too. A couple issues of the comic, they really did a good job with Shane, I think, as a TV yeah. character. I think he was yeah. better in the show than in the, the comic, I think. So Yeah, and I just really like John Bernthal as a as an actor. So Yeah, yeah. Even even Kirkman was like, I just blew through the Shane arc in the comics, you know. So <laughs> I, I think even he thinks or like, you know, is kind of the same opinion that uh the show Shane was better, so. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, also from the regular cast, we have Kyle the Redbeard himself, uh, the only other player not to bail on us, so thank you for not going to Texas or Europe or wherever else those fuckers went. No problem. Who are you playing tonight? <laughs> uh, I will be playing Glenn, uh, actually, and um, yeah, I, I, I believe I... I stopped watching around the time Glenn got uh, uh, left off the show. Yeah. Sorry. Spoilers. Yeah, it's, it's, there might be spoilers, people, but come on. If you if you don't know at this point, it's been long enough. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, but I mean, yeah. Yeah. You know, the walk, interesting measure of time. I can measure my time as a funeral director to how old the walking dead tv universe is because the first season came out when i started mortuary school Damn. so interesting Whoa. uh i remember i remember matt was like dude there's this new show and it was only six episodes and i was like just taken by it like holy shit this is really fucking good little did we know the empire that the walking dead would become yeah a decade and a half later so some good some bad but that's okay <laughs> Uh, okay, cool. Well, as you guys can see and hear, we have a new face on the show. He's never been here before. I'd like to welcome my good friend, Joe. We may have mentioned him in the past. We've mentioned a lot of my friends over the, the years here on the channel, but, uh, All bad Joe, things, sure. no, no, we, uh, I, no, I'm pretty sure we didn't talk shit about you. It's it, people like Ben we talk shit about and Will sometimes. <laughs> uh, or people that aren't here, like Scar and Eric and that other guy whose name I can't remember. You know, we could get a name. Um, yeah, uh, Froggit, that's it. That's the guy. Uh, anyway, uh, Joe was uh, someone who I met back in the Gurney Mills era of my Games Workshop career uh, towards the beginning and pretty much gamed ever since then. We did yeah. some D&D &D back in the day. Uh, uh, gag on that, D&D. &D, eh. um, but uh, it was good times back then. And then uh, Joe was my staff member when I was a manager at Games Workshop for the last year before they purged off Chicago. So, yeah. uh, and Joe is uh, one of the top tier painters of our age. Oh, uh, thank you. At least in, in my you. circle of friends. Absolutely, man. I still remember that uh, that Blood Dragon Knight, the Blood Knight you painted. Oh, yeah, that, yeah. That competition that never happened. That was some bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> but, Not uh,. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, uh, tell us, uh, who are you playing tonight? Anything else you want to tell about the listeners? And you actually have an interesting uh, relationship to The Walking Dead, I found out. I, so. I do, yeah. So I'm going to be playing Michonne. Um, she's one of the few characters I'm aware of from The Walking Dead, because I have saw half of the first episode, and that's all I've seen. Um, my wife really like the walking dead until i think the negan era the same as uh, whoever else said it um, yeah most people yeah 
So it was always like on in the background, you know, and I would just like, you know, walk in the room, oh, there's a thing. And so this is one of the few characters I know because I remember walking in and she had like a couple zombies on a chain or something. Yep. Um, so yep. I don't know if that's in my equipment list over here, but uh, hopefully. I believe one of your talents is actually oh, yeah. is actually that. Uh, so. And then aside from that, I know like you know the meme stuff like Coral and and Glenn and <laughs> everybody hates John Bernthal for some reason. I don't know. Uh, okay. Um, did you just not? Are you not into zombie stuff, or you just didn't find the show interesting? Or no, I, I really like zombie stuff. Um, it just like I didn't have cable for a really long time, and so by the time I was actually able to like watch the show, it was like season five or six. Okay. And I was just like, oh, I have to catch up, and it just never happened. Never it's it's a tall order, like because I think there's eleven right. seasons in the main yeah, show. It's just, that's that's a, lot of, a lot of TV to watch. Yeah, it really is. You know, and if you've heard all the mainstream stuff, everybody's like, oh, after season five or after season seven, it all goes downhill, and you know, everyone's got different tastes. So, okay. Right. Well, we're we're happy to have you here, Joe. Thank you for Thanks, answering yeah. the summons and filling in the last slot. That's cool. Yeah, sure, no big deal. Yeah. Um, and then finally, last but not least, he was on the show once like three years ago in the very early era when we did the first starter set adventure of Alien, when we did Hope's Last Day, I think two or three different times. Travis has returned. I don't even remember who the fuck you played. I think you were the android. I can't um, remember. I think it was the android too. Yeah. Yeah. But uh <laughs> Travis does not have a working camera right now, so he's been replaced by his character art. So we can see who you're playing tonight, Travis. That's gonna be our good our good mom, Carol. Not Coral, Carol. Yeah, the uh, other Coral. Yeah. Uh so how's it going, man? Welcome back. Good to have you. Uh it's been good. Been going good. Uh glad to do another uh one off. Hell yeah. Yeah. And uh you watched some Walking Dead, right? Yeah, so, uh, like yourself, I'm really into the whole zombie scene. Uh, I have actually seen all, I believe, 11, or was it 12 seasons? I'm not exactly sure. Yeah, like 11 and a half or something, that. yeah. Yeah, uh, none of the spinoffs, but uh, I've also read um, the early versions of the comics for The Walking Dead. Mm -hmm. uh, I've done a few zombie board games, uh, like the Resident Evil tabletop, uh, oh, Zombies yeah. Dice. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah into the, the shows like The Last of Us and also the two video games. So into the zombies, not necessarily sparkling vampires. <laughs> yeah, I don't blame you. Team Jacob. Anyway, <laughs> uh, I'm the great unclean one, your host, as always, and I will be playing Game Master. It's just Game Master. There's no fancy name for the GM in this one. Uh, it should be ZM, I think, Zombie Master, but there's no zombies in Walking Dead. It's the Walker Ooh. Master. Uh, anyway, I, uh, I'm a big fan of The Walking Dead. Uh, I've uh, watched everything except the latest spinoff because I, too, do not have cable anymore uh, because that would be literally the only show I'd be watching. So I figure I'll just wait until I can see it somewhere else. Uh, and I've actually been re-watching the original series. I made it through the first three seasons, and, man, that is peak walking dead i was watching it again to see like in my opinion when did the show start to change and i can tell you it's not by the end of season three so we'll see i think it's probably like once they get to alexandria i think is when it changes they're not on the road anymore they're not really survivors they've right. got a place to live so that the show changes you know but i am one of the few people i think that enjoyed pretty much the whole series um I didn't necessarily think the Negan stuff dragged out too long, but I can see why people felt that. And uh, I enjoyed the last season, you know, despite what they had to do with all the COVID restrictions and the filming. I thought they did a good job. And uh, yeah, the spinoffs have been okay. Uh, Fear the Walking Dead was up and down. I think bringing Morgan over was the biggest mistake they made of the show. Uh, and the ending just uh, really left me wondering why was I even watching it? It just didn't do anything for me. But uh, watch season two of Fear the Walking Dead, if nothing else, because zombies on the high seas, fucking awesome. <laughs> that sounds Shit. sweet. Yeah, they, they're on a yacht that this dude has, like, for the whole season, and it's it's awesome. It's so good. Um, 
So like also, snakes on a plane, it's zombies yeah, on a boat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then there's also a scene, I think it's in season three or four, where the main character fucking shoves a spoon in the side of a dude's eye and has it ready to pop his eyeball out and she takes him hostage like that. Jesus Christ. It's so awesome. <laughs> Such a badass. Yeah, so it's got some gems in it. Don't get me wrong. There's some good shit there. So, uh, and yes, I all too am into all sorts of zombie media. I love zombie movies. I love zombie board games. Uh, and now we get to do some zombie RPGs and uh, with hopefully many more to come. So, uh, this is new for all of us listeners, viewers. Uh, I have yet to run this game, so we might be fumbling through a few things here but uh we'll spend the next couple hours here playing and uh checking it out so uh i guess we can dive right in unless uh any of you have any questions about anything okay let me just get my uh my notes up here which i should have had up already but uh, i'm still fumbling my through foundry here so uh the walking dead game this rpg uh is meant to be it's the walking dead universe role-playing game so this is meant to take place in whatever part of the walking dead you want although when you look through the book it really does seem to be focused on the main series you'll see some artwork of some of the main characters there i think here we can even see michonne carol and aaron fighting a horde of zombies on top of this bus or whatever so um but it's meant to just take place in the universe, so all the tropes and stuff that we've learned from the show and the comics are there. And in this particular situation, you guys are going to be playing as some of the characters from the show. So, uh, the four of you, at this point, you're all part of a community that is on the outskirts of Atlanta. And... Um, you all have known each other for a few weeks now. Uh, so the other characters from the show, we're going to ignore them. You haven't met them. You haven't met the Grimes family. We haven't seen Shane. Um, Carol, at this point, your uh, your husband and uh, and daughter are gone. We're going to assume they died in a in a different way than what we saw on the show. Um, and uh, and Gabriel, you've shown up a few seasons early, so you get to collect a, a few bit. more. You get to collect a few more paychecks for the next couple of years. <laughs> um, Unless you die today, we'll see. Then, then no paychecks for you. Uh, but so um, you are the, those same characters, although your your odds and your your way of getting here perhaps are a little bit different. Uh, but regardless, the four of you are part of a small community that uh, has recently had some some bad issues. Uh, as a matter of fact, so bad you get some flavor text. So just a half a year ago. Everything seemed to be working fine. You managed to get out of Atlanta, and you kept adding both people and resources to your haven. Brandon, your self-appointed leader, was good at making the hard decisions while still keeping everybody happy. Then something happened. Was it plain bad luck? Or did you just somehow anger the powers beyond and above? During a particularly bad rainstorm... The roof, the roof of the haven collapsed. You guys were staying in an old abandoned plantation from back in the Civil War era that uh, was still standing. The entire plantation was swept away by the water, and almost everybody in your group at one point or another caught pneumonia. Now, this would have easily been treated before the outbreak, but not in the world of the dead, where medicine is a rare commodity. One of the first of many to die in bed was your leader, Brandon. Many more are extremely ill, and you're about to lose them all. A few have managed to avoid getting sick, or have had the disease and managed to pull through. Those few are the four of you, and you have left the haven in search of a miracle. But where to start looking? Closest drugstores were all plundered, you tried going to the nearest hospital, but were surrounded by the dead and had to run for your life. To complicate matters further, you've seen signs of another group of people moving around the area. Car tracks, shells from weapons, brained walkers. This morning, you guys spent the night, the previous night, in this, on the outskirts of this 
uh, town you found, a small community called Alfred Springs. Uh, you got here just as night fell, so you decided to hold up in a, uh, I don't know, Sean, where'd you guys hold up last night? Probably some kind of, like, gas station. Yeah, I've never been to Atlanta, but I see a lot of gas stations in the show. I think that's that's fair. Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's the gas station from episode one. Ooh. How about that? There's a small zombie girl walking around outside with her teddy bear. So, you stayed in this gas station over the night. And in the morning, you wake up. It's hot mid-morning sun as you look up to the sky. And you can see something shining like a golden beacon in the distance. On the top floor of a nearby parking garage, you see the reflective metallic paint of a gold ambulance. Could this be your salvation? Or perhaps nothing? There's only one way to find out. So, the group of you, it's just the four of you, you're the only four. This is early seasons Walking Dead. We're talking around seasons, around seasons two to four. We're still hanging around Atlanta. Uh, we may or may not have met, uh, you know, some other groups, maybe the family, the Green family, uh, or maybe not. But that's where we are. We're still around the outskirts of Atlanta at this point. It is, uh, it is currently summer. It is hot. The sun is sizzling overhead very bright, sticky, muggy, and this area you're in called Alfred Springs is uh, is the outskirts of the city. So it's not super high, densely packed buildings, but it is still uh, more or less a concrete jungle. Uh, but you're not near massive skyscrapers. Uh, you know, you're more near like uh, more commercial districts. So you're trying to find something, anything, to save the people back at your haven. They need medicine, and they need it badly, or most of them are going to die. So, what would you all like to do as you step out of the gas station, look around, deathly quiet, just a little bit of wind whistling through the streets, rustling some leaves of nearby trees, Perhaps uh, scattering some debris down the street. But other than that, it seems to be just the four of you. And I'm going to move us to a new map here. Golden and us. I'll put your tokens on the table here. And we will say your gas station is I this mean, building like, right. right here. So when we came in and spent the night at the gas station, did we have to avoid zombies on our way in, or was it pretty low you, density? It's been low density, but it has not been completely empty. I'm going to change your tokens here while we talk, so it's only your first name, because that's way too much. Uh, we'll do hovered. There we go. Yeah, that's a lot. Anyway, it is, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, fun fact. Michonne, Michonne's last name is Hawthorne, if you didn't know that. Didn't know that. Which also, it's weird because they give you everybody else's last names on the character sheet, but not Michonne's for some reason. Which I think it's really weird. But anyway. Uh, so, yes, you have seen and maybe even dealt with a few undead at this point. But you guys aren't the hardcore badasses that uh, that you would become in later seasons. So right. a single zombie, still a little a little trippy. It's still a little scary. Uh, yeah, and a horde bite. of zombies. Yeah, I mean, you guys all know how it works. <clears throat> you guys know that if you're bit, it's a death sentence. Um, and I would say at this point, you probably, with people that have died at your uh, your haven, you do know that people who die come back as a walker. Um, you mentioned that I have the talent, and I read it over here, about, mm -hmm. like, the zombies that I keep with me. Yes. Where do I keep them? Are they in, like, a hammer space situation, and they just, like, pop out whenever 
I'm using the talent or <laughs> no. So the um, what is the name of that talent? Pet keeper. Pet keeper. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you have these two zombies. You have not told anybody in the group why you have these, and anybody who's asked, you just ignore what they've said. But um, you have two zombies that uh, the rest of the group probably thinks are important to you in some way or mean something to you. But you have these two zombies whose arms and jaws you've removed with your swords. And they seem to now be either uninterested or obviously unable to feed. And you keep them on chains when you walk around. And they kind of act as a deterrent to help you sneak past other zombies. Yeah. It's easy to do when you're by yourself. When you're with a group, it's a little bit harder because other people are not used to just hanging out with zombies like yeah. you are at this point. I was going to mention, <clears throat> I was going to ask that too. Like, we've, we've been together for a few weeks, you said? Like, are, is everyone yeah, you're, cool we'll, with we'll zombies? Assume, we'll assume you're the newest member of the group, okay. but you've proven that you're a, a tough badass, and uh, you're one of the only people that didn't get the pneumonia, probably because you're the you joined after everybody really started getting it. Okay. So, uh, yeah, normally when you're not on the move, you just chain them up somewhere nearby, uh, sure. and they kind of act as a deterrent most of the time. Do they so. make a lot of noise, or because they don't have a jaw anymore, they're kind of... No, I mean, they can still kind of grumble, but, uh, yeah, they they seem to be a little bit more docile than most, most okay. undead are. Nice. Okay. Cool. So we, we see this golden ambulance in parking garage across the street. Do we hear any yes, sounds coming from the parking garage? You do. Uh, the parking garage is three, count it, three stories. That's the first story, which is the ground floor. And then there's the second people. floor. Yeah, there's an argument of it in the Discord, actually. I thought it was kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> Sean and I have a special triggering event of, of floors, and Travis, I think, from Ernie's campaign. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised Attic, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> So there are three floors, the ground floor, the second floor, and the third floor, the top floor. You can see the ambulance is on the southern part of the uh, top floor, uh, kind of up against the edge. Um, the floors themselves, you can see they're not completely walled from top to bottom. There's like a small wall that's maybe about three feet tall, about waist height. So you could climb over if you wanted to to get into it. But obviously a car would have to go through the main entrance. Yeah. Um, you can see there's pillars throughout, and there's a ramp uh, that runs down the, the center here from uh, east to west on each floor. Well, on the second and third floor, I should say. How do um, I move the map? Sorry for interrupting. Uh, hold Next down the right, right mouse button, and you can drag the map. You can zoom in and out. And if you hold left mouse button, you'll do a, uh, a ping. Yeah, I saw you ping, and then I was like, how yeah. do I do that? All right, well, thank you. Sorry. <clears throat> yep. No, no problem. Uh, yes, yeah, so, Sean, you do, in fact, hear what sounds like the distant sound of music coming from the parking garage. It's faint from where you are, but you can hear it kind of floating across the street. Okay. Well, I, I think we have to go up there and get to that ambulance, but there's there's music coming from the parking garage. I'll go I check it out it alone. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think alone? that's safe. No, I don't think I'll be very wise. We should probably go together. Trust me, I'm much sneakier when events. I'm not with you guys. Oh. Okay. I think we should still go together. True. Mm. Okay. What about you, Carol? What do you think? I'm with you, Gabriel. God be with you. <laughs> how, how are we going to get in? I, I see there's what, a fence. There's. Do you see a door to maybe like the, the first level? From where you guys are, you do not see the main entrance. The only thing you see is this uh, white structure you can tell that is probably a staircase and or maybe there's an elevator inside but there is a door on the southern wall here that leads into that as for the actual entrance where cars drive in you can't see it from on this side 
Why don't we scout out the front entrance, right? entrance, right? Michonne does have her zombies, though, right? Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. And I'm guessing that we've been with her enough that she might be a good scouting person to maybe see if something is safe before we... Uh, I would say, so this is what I will say as far as what you guys know about each other. Um, Glenn and Carol, you two have known each other the longest. You guys met early on and were here, uh, like, this group was your original group. So rather than the Atlanta group from the show, the group that you're trying to rescue is your first group that you've been with since the outbreak started. Uh, oh, Gabriel okay. showed up shortly after, so he's not one of the OGs, but he is still, you know... Uh, You've known him a little bit longer, and uh, Michonne, she's only been around maybe for like a week or so, and uh, you guys don't know a whole lot about her. She doesn't talk much; she tends to keep to herself. But you can, you guys have seen she can handle herself in a fight, and um, but you still probably don't fully trust her. You guys do know that Glenn uh, typically does do a lot of runs into more dangerous parts of the city or the outskirts, usually by himself. He seems to be pretty good at it. Uh, Carol, you would know that he was a pizza delivery guy, so he knows his way around the city. And uh, Glenn, you do know that Carol what, did have an abusive husband and a daughter, uh, but both of them have died. Uh, her husband died when your previous uh, group got overrun. He had to abandon where you guys were holding out. And unfortunately, her daughter uh, went missing and uh, was later found as a walker. Uh, Gabriel, whether or not you've told the group about what happened to your previous congregation is up to you. Nope. So whatever, whatever story you have wanted to tell the group as to how you, you know, how you came to be, but we'll assume they met you at some point. Uh, Glenn probably met you in the city on one of his runs, and uh, you know, it's a priest. You know, you didn't prove to be too dangerous, and uh, he brought you back. Yeah. Alright. Well, yeah, I'm down to scout out the, the the first floor steps right there that that white building guys if you want we could sneak over there and see if it's safe the way i see yeah, it we've got two options we can either go through the building and go up the stairs in close spaces often incur a lot of danger or we can hump over hop over the the little wall there and walk up the ramps i don't know how many cars are in there so i don't know if there's gonna be any walkers hiding behind those cars but at least we'll have a little bit more vision and more places to run, even if it's going to take longer. Does anyone like have any idea. kind of light source? Um. Yeah, whatever's on your character sheets is what you guys have. Um, I just so have a knife and a pistol. There's a few things in your inventory, but not oh, a whole lot. I have yeah. two foods, yeah. rations, a Bible, and a knife. I have two foods. <laughs> <laughs> I can eat twice. <laughs> Speaking of, if we're in the gas station, right? Should we grab Nothing helpful. whatever might be here? Can if I you'd search like, for maybe? We yeah. can do our first roll of the game, which is Ooh. going to be. Hold on, let me get a character sheet here. Uh, I believe it's scavenge. Is that a scavenge? There, there's a scout survival tech for wits, mobility, range combat, stealth, endure, force, close combat. Leadership and manipulation and medicine. Scout or survival, I, maybe. Probably seems. Believe like it, right? I believe it's scout, but let me double check here. In the book. So I don't lead you guys astray. Mm -hmm. That's not it. It's probably scout or survival. Yeah. All right, let's check in the core rule book where we've got an index. Can actually, uh, let's see. Because there is a whole scavenging table, so it is a big part of the game. But, Makes uh, sense. This is on the game. Okay, it is the survival skill. Uh, you can use survive. You can use survival to scavenge, to track, or to use your understanding. 
and recollection of the world before the outbreak to make an educated guess as to where a specific item may be. So if anybody wants, you can all make a single survival check here. So yeah, let's do just it. like in other free league games, you have two uh, pools of dice. You have your base dice, which is a combination of your attribute and okay. your skill. And then you'll have stress, which none of you have stress at this point. And it works the same way as it does in Alien. Uh, you need at least one six on either a stress or a base dice to pass. If you get a one, which is a walker, rolling a walker on your stress dice, uh, then something bad happens. You don't panic like an alien. That's where the difference is. Uh, it's a little bit more uh, fluid. It's not as, as strict as alien. Uh, so everybody can go ahead and roll. You just need one success on this. Extra successes do help. So quick question then. So if I have like a wits of four and a survival of two, I roll six dice. Yeah, if you just click on the name of your skill, it'll automatically roll the dice for you. And ah. it'll add it all together for you. Because Foundry is superior to eight. Roll 20. <laughs> God damn, Carol. Oh. Of course, damn. Glenn. Don't do. We're going to push that oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, yeah, see, so you can push can just push? like in uh, Alien. Yep. Um,. You will re-roll okay. any dice that are not successes. You'll automatically gain a point of stress, and that'll automatically get <laughs> into your roll, just like an alien. Well, and here I yep. thought my character was good at five dice. That's everybody. There we. Go. Oh, and he rolls a walker. <laughs> Ton of a. Uh, two successes. Oh, I like the little skull. That's awesome. Oh, and they're biohazard symbols. Up. That's cool. <laughs> you messed okay. up. Okay. Everybody it, passed. Okay, so here's what happens. First off, we'll do the passing. Since you passed, you all get to make a roll on the scavenge table. So if you guys go to your rollable tables in the top right, it's the little box with, like, the four lines on it. Mm -hmm. And uh, you guys should have a folder to open that goes to PC mm -hmm. tables. And there's nope. one that says scavenging. I don't uh, see it. Oh, wait. Blank. I That's because I didn't actually give you guys access to this yet. Yeah. I made a folder, and I didn't give you guys ownership. All right, hold on. How dare you? Uh, all right, configure. While you're doing that, do we get, like, rolls on the table equal to how many successes we got? Uh, the extra Somebody successes give you extra stuff. Oh, OK. So do you guys have a t uh, folder now? Fishing. Yeah. Yes. OK, there should be, I think, six tables in there you can roll on. Yep. I don't know okay. why there's vehicle fuel, but whatever. Um. Okay, so roll on the scavenging table. I believe it's a D. It's a D, one hundred, like a D, six hundred sixty six table, basically. Uh, so there's a lot of shit to find. Oh, Glenn. Oh. <laughs> okay, so um, Joe and Travis, you guys see the table we're to roll? Yeah, I click uh, roll, and it's just like randomly scrolling or super fast. Yeah, yeah it'll it should do that, and then once one. it finish, it'll roll. I got a shovel. Um, there we go. It's just taking some time. So I got. I'm not sure where to enter like the three dice. Like I got three successes. Oh no no. So did you do you see the scavenging table to roll on, Travis? Yeah, and I see three like two questions. Yeah, and don't worry about that. Through. Just just hit the button that says roll. Don't change anything. Uh, it's at the bottom of the list. When you oh, open up the scavenge table. I see. Okay. Okay. All right. So, Gabriel, you, this place has been picked over pretty well, obviously. You find a box of matches. Glenn scores big and finds a revolver under the, uh, the front desk, probably what the owner had. Uh, Michonne, you find a shovel. And Travis, uh, who is Carol... You find some rice and cookies, two rations worth. So uh, for every extra success you had beyond the first, you also gain an extra ration worth of food. And I believe I can give you access to the items here. All right. Tell me if you guys have anything on your yep. items tab now. All right, there should be weapons and then gear. I don't know if all these things are actually in the gear because there's a lot of things. You just type it on your character sheet somewhere. 
obviously some of these have like in-game rules, some of them are more, you know, we just have to realize what they can do. Uh, but every little thing helps. And Glenn, if you want, go ahead and roll me a d6 to see how many bullets are in that revolver. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> you fucker. You fucker. Fucker. One bullet. <laughs> no. For <laughs> yourself. Yeah. Always save one. Uh, uh, uh. How do we add the rations to our character sheet? Uh, if you go into the items tab and then go yeah, yeah, to the there. gear folder, just drag. Uh, is there? Is it on here? A ration yeah, of food. Ration of food. Yeah. Just yeah. drag that into your sheet, and then it should appear in your inventory. Can you uh, throw a revolver in there? Because there's just items. I don't think there's weapons. Uh, I thought I'd give you access to the weapons. Hold on. There should be a separate oh, folder. Uh, oh, hold on. How about now? Okay. Uh, gear. Nope. Um, I just got gear. It's not, it's not working for some reason. Yeah, I wasn't able to do mine, but I might just be dumb. The sometimes Foundry doesn't like to give ownership to... Let me do this way. Okay, how about now? <laughs> Sorry, yeah, Discord. Right. Yeah, I, I, yeah, it doesn't do anything. No, I, I got nothing, I man. Oh, I, I know why. I know why. Hold on. It's because there's subfolders in the weapon folder. That's why. Because there's close. Hey. There you go. So and... matches isn't in the gear, but I I assume we know what matches do. So. Yeah, yeah. So if you when you're in the inventory, um, you can click on the little plus button next to where it says gear, and it'll bring up like a a generic item, and then you can edit it just like you can edit stuff in all the other Foundry games. Nice. And then, uh, you probably won't have to worry about carrying capacity, but your carrying capacity is done in slots. And you have a number of encumbrance slots equal to your strength plus two. And then it'll tell you the weight of an item. So, Glenn, mm. for example, your pistol is one weight, the revolver is one weight. You okay, have a strength of two, so you have four encumbrance. Uh, I don't know where it keeps track of encumbrance on here, but I'm sure there's somewhere. Oh, it's on the general tab. Okay. Oh, yeah, I see that. Cool. Also, I should point out uh, a feature of this game um, on your character sheet. Uh, all characters have an issue, which is... Uh, a drawback of theirs it's a problem they have it's a, it's something they have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis so your issue is obviously to help you kind of understand a little bit of what your character does uh, a little bit about their personality and things like that uh, consequently you also have something called a drive uh, drive is kind of what keeps your character going to try to survive in this horrible world um, now that could change over time and there's in-game mechanics where you can actually lose your drive if you suffer too much fear. Basically, your character has a mental breakdown and, you know, their outlook on the world changes. Um, there's also things called anchors, which are kind of like your your buddies from Alien. But your anchors are also people you can er interact with to regain stress when you're back at the, at the Haven. Um, we're not going to worry about that in this because you can't really do that in this one shot. Uh, but that's, uh, that's what anchors are in this game. Kind of like an emotional support system you have. But if they're angry at you for whatever reason in the story, then you can't use them to relieve stress because they're pissed off at you. <laughs> so if, I you love know, it. For example, <laughs> you know, if, you're, if your wife is your is your anchor, but you're, you guys are like having a, a domestic, you know, dispute, right? You can't go like hang out with her and relieve your stress because you guys awesome. are like at odds. So you actually try to keep your your anchors happy and alive even if it puts you at odds with other people in the group so um but we won't worry about that right now but that's another feature of the game so but your issues and your drives those will probably come into place while we play so, nice uh okay so you guys scavenge around the uh the gas station a bit you find a couple things 
Um, nothing super helpful, but uh, at least you get a couple bits and pieces here. Um, but yeah, this place, this place has been picked clean. Oh, okay. and someone rolled a walker, if I recall. Okay. So when you roll a walker, that's rolling a one on one of your stress dice, uh, you mess up is the term in the game. And that can have a variety of effects. Uh, by the rules, the most common thing is the threat level of the scenario goes up by one, or the... Uh, Where's the threat? Well, there it is. There should be a little threat meter here. You even get a little dial like in Zombicide. Oh, jeez. Um, <laughs> so the threat meter is between zero and six. And the threat meter basically is an indication of how active the undead are in the area and how close they are to you or if they've noticed you. If it's zero, then currently the area is safe and there doesn't seem to be any issues. Uh, one or two, there's a couple walkers milling about, but they haven't noticed you yet. Uh, when you get to a three, they've started to notice you and they start coming at you. Uh, when you're at five, they're they're right on top of you. When you're at six, you are in like hand to hand with with zombies, and it might be one or it could be dozens or a swarm or a horde. Uh, it just depends how many zombies are in the area. But uh, so that's one thing when you mess up. The threat level could go up. If there is a swarm nearby, it could get larger, as uh, perhaps you've attracted more undead to the area. There's also a table that you can roll on um, for when you mess up in combat, or there's just kind of a generic list. We can also use this as a way to uh, to increase, uh, you know, or tell more parts of the story. Do a little bit of that collaborative role play that a lot of these games do. I'm gonna say for now. Because uh, we had the threat level was zero, we're gonna say the threat level is now one. So you guys have made a little bit of noise. Um, perhaps it's also the music coming from the parking garage, but uh, you do see a walker or two on the street. They don't notice you, and there's not a lot of them, but uh, it's clear that at least overnight, what were clear streets, uh, there's a few walkers shambling about. Sorry. <laughs> no worries. I got some more rations for us. But Glenn, I did like your idea of possibly maybe like stealthing up to the wall, looking over the wall to see if maybe there's anything there. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. It's not too far. We can kind of watch this back from here. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, so Glenn, are you going to go by yourself or everybody else going to stay in the, uh, the... I could go with Glenn. Tell All right. Us. Well, uh, if you want to do stealth, there's a uh, there's a stealth skill you can roll. Make it nice and easy. Well, so just uh, I mean, Guess can what? I say this? Can I say this, Chris? Like my stats? Yeah, yeah. I don't. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, so I have a talent. Um, if I go alone, I get a plus two to my stealth rolls. So yeah. Nice. I figured it was something like that. I mean, it's only across yeah, like so. four lanes of, but, of road. Yeah. So it's not that far. Yeah. Like, we can run over and help him out. If... Okay. Sounds good. I know what I'm not wanted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, um, that's good. Uh, you Here, know what? Actually, I think Glenn would. Uh, Car what is, what is Carol holding weapon wise? Well, she's she's holding. A lot. She's she's holding a knife and a pistol. She's decked out. One in both hands. Oh, okay. <laughs> Dual wield. Holy she's shit! This thing went All right. <laughs> We're starting to see uh, Carol. Survi survivalist Carol, Carol coming to the front here. Yeah. Shit. Okay. Never mind. I was gonna. I was gonna. <laughs> my husband's hand pistol off and the my revolver. child's knife. <laughs> That's dark. That's <laughs> amazing. Well, yeah. So I, I guess it'll just be uh, it'll be Glenn then, uh, heading yeah. out. Okay. Give me, watch stealth, him. give me a stealth test, please. I believe in you. As he does this, should we be uh, outside? That way we don't have to run far. Or... Oh, like hide behind this car, maybe. It's it's up to you. You guys can be outside, like hiding behind the gas, uh, the gas pumps. Yeah, that was kind you of know. my thought. 
I kind of, I'm kind of imagining what we see here is that top part that overhangs the uh, yeah. the gas pumps and the actual yeah, gas like station is probably here off the off the map. Yeah. Oh damn! Oh, all those dice. It was real good at that. Three successes. Okay, so Glenn, you uh, you creep across the street. Um, for some reason, I can't move your tokens, even though I'm the GM. That's some bullshit. So, <laughs> oh, can you move your own tokens? Uh, let me. I can move mine. Yep. Okay. I'm out of here. All right. Well, it's like herding cats. I can't even control them now. Taking away my god powers. All right. So you <laughs> creep across the street. You're ducking between mm -hmm. a few of these wrecked cars. And where exactly are you trying to get to? Yeah, well, I, I think, uh, you know how just... parking garages have the, like, their half walls? Yeah, that's how so, this is. Yeah, so I think he would kind of peek over it, take kind of take stock of the area, and if it's safe to vault in. And uh, as he was doing that, um, he would uh, make sure he had a path towards here where he could then hop up the the same like half wall, you know, like the little opening yep. between yep. the uh, yeah. So he would just try and make as fast a, a climb as he can, and then would turn around and you know vault over onto the third floor okay and just try and go uh, as fast as you could give me a scout roll so scout okay. is used uh primarily for two things um when you're moving around on like the world map you can scout to get an mm -hmm. idea for like each space on the map because this game uh it gives you kind of like a world map like uh forbidden lands does where you can kind of explore and like find like what's in you know what's in square one what's in square two that sort of thing um yeah however you can also use scout to uh basically like an observation test sort of thing um so mm -hmm. we can get an overview of your immediate surroundings or spot threats or hidden things it may let you see there's a sniper on a rooftop spot hidden equipment in a building or notice someone trying to sneak past you or discover the best way into a fortress um okay so you have two successes is there anything particular you're looking for uh i think glenn's focused on making sure he has a kind of like a direct or at least uh he observes to see a direct path okay. so he's just um he's just making sure that there's enough light that he can see where he's going mm -hmm. and a short enough distance to where he can get to this you know second floor ramp so he's not out of sunlight okay uh so one thing you notice immediately is it is even d despite there being like open walls uh Mm -hmm. it, it, there are a lot of places in here where it is dark um, yeah. there's a lot of places someone or something could potentially be hiding uh, there are a good amount of cars all over the place some of them still in parking spaces some of them obviously crashed as people tried to, to take off um, so there's a lot of cover in here as well and there are pillars uh, throughout the whole thing, you know, probably about, I don't know, maybe about eight on each side, kind of like that. Mm -hmm. Um, so they're, and they're big, big concrete pillars. You can easily hide behind one. Um, yeah. I mean, you more or less can see a straight shot to the bottom of the ramp where you can like hop over the wall on the ground floor and then hop up to the ramp to make your way up to the second floor. Uh, mm -hmm. you also notice from where you're standing this is the main entrance over here on the left. You can see it's got one of those crossbars that come down and mm -hmm. it is currently down and you can see that there is a crashed car in front that's basically blocking most of the entrance. So you actually couldn't bring a car in here unless you tried to move that out of the way somehow. You see there's a little security checkpoint in there as well that sits between the entrance and exit lanes. Uh, looks like mm -hmm. probably a security guard booth of some sort. And as you've gotten closer, you can tell 
there is music coming from the upper floors of the uh, the parking garage. And you can hear the sounds of walkers in the distance. Shit. Distance as in inside the parking garage or distance as in like far away where we don't have to worry about them? Uh, for Glenn, it sounds like it's coming higher from higher up in the parking garage somewhere. Cool. <laughs> of course. <laughs> and uh, uh, it, it sounds like 70s glam rock. <laughs> Amazing. Okay. Um. Uh, so would would Glenn be able to see the group or like? Yeah, be you can see them from where you are. So they be they be able to see him like gesturing. Sure. Right. Yeah. Okay. So I think he'd turn back and do like walkers, lots up. <laughs> I was doing hand moves. I, I don't know what the, any of those mean. I, don't, I didn't bring my binoculars. I'm not proficient in gang signs. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, I um, look to Michonne and look back to the old I don't woman. Speak street he rolls her eyes like, oh no, of course. Of course. Of course there are zombies. Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Let's go uh, over and talk to them. Yeah, this won't yeah. work. <laughs> She's gonna walk over, unhook her her pair. I think okay. we're gonna need these. I will follow behind Michonne so the pair of walkers does not be anywhere near me. Yeah, and I'll try and stealth my way with them. Yeah, yeah you I'll notice yeah. Um, the walkers that Michonne has with her. You know, they they make noises, but for the most part, they tend to just kind of stand there until she starts dragging them along. And they just kind of stumble behind her. They really don't ever, like, lunge at you guys or anything like that. Most of the time, they don't even seem to really notice you guys. Like, they might, like, when you guys first encountered them, they kind of looked at you and you could, you could tell they were, like, sniffing um, when you guys got close. But other than maybe occasionally staring at you, like they don't really do anything else. Uh, it's unlike any walkers you guys have ever seen before. Occasionally they seem to get agitated. Like they'll start to like move around a lot and make noise with the chains. But most of the time they just kind of stand there and do nothing. Okay. Good to know. All right. So are the three of you crossing the street as well? Yeah. 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 Do we need to roll anything right. for that or just... Go ahead if and do you want to be stealthy, I will need stealth tests. All right, I'm gonna sure. try that. And does your what does your talent do, uh, Joe, with the walkers? It's plus two stealth. Okay, against the zombies only. Okay, well there are undead in the area, um, so when you roll, uh, I believe if you right click. Yeah, I can use pet keeper here. Nice. Nice. Okay, did it add the extra dice? It did, yeah. Okay, good. I was gonna say also when you when you click uh, on stealth or any skill, it'll bring up a uh, a box that like has modifiers and stuff, and you can add dice where it says bonus dice. Uh, oh yeah, I'm, I'm liking the system so, a lot. Yeah. yeah so, cool. as always, free league and foundry <laughs> crushing it. Okay, everyone's got at least one success, uh, perhaps with or without the help of Michonne's walkers. You guys creep across the street. Uh, it's a little bit slow because the zombies don't understand the, you know, the idea of like crouching and moving quickly. Uh, <laughs> but you guys make it across, no problems. And uh, once you guys get to where Glenn is, you guys can cross the street up against that wall. You guys can hear the music is a little bit louder. All right. Well, what's next? That was my question. We just want to uh, hop over. Do we want to hop over it, or do we want to actually try to take the, the stairs? Because I'm guessing the stairs, the door is from the inside? Yeah, that's what you're guessing. You can't see the inside yeah. doors from where you guys are standing. Are there any cars on, like, our wall side? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, can we move a little bit 
closer to the uh, stairwell building to see if there's any external doors we can use to go in. You guys can see the external doors are on this wall right here. It's oh, like, okay. a, like a double set of like glass doors. Let's give that a shot, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, and he's going to pull out his switchblade just in case something jumps out. Yeah. Okay. Right, I'm ready. Uh, whoever's through the door first, please give me a scout wing. Well, I, I recommend it, so I, I guess I will take that. Um, okay. Okay. Dying. The st- <laughs> you'll, you'll dive on that, that landmine? Yeah. A uh, no oh. successes. Okay. We're going to push. Like, We're going to push. Like to push. Okay. One success. Okay. Okay. So, Gabriel, as you open the door, um, you notice, you know, it's obviously nothing's been cleaned in weeks since the outbreak started. Mm-hmm. Lots of dust, lots of detri- detrius. Uh, you notice that there is um, there are footprints in the dust as if someone had come in and opened the door, maybe walked in a step or two, and like you see the footsteps like go in like a step or two, and then they they stop, and they don't go any further. Okay. So either a person went in and came back out, or they sprouted wings and started flying after they got inside. Yeah, maybe they just zip lined up, you know. Yeah, so those zombie apocalypse makes sense. They, they ascend, they ascend, <laughs> like Batman. Right, right, just zoom. Uh, yeah. So uh, there's, is there how well lit is it? Um, it's fairly lit because you've got the, you know, it's glass door and you're right on the out the outside here. But as you like look down the hall, it gets darker. There's no lights on. You can see. Uh, to the left, like basically as the hall goes down, you can see to the left is probably where the uh, S- the elevators are, and to the right is a door that goes into the actual stairwell. Okay. Uh, so I guess I'll just kind of open the door and walk in and kind of motion people in. All right. Kind of yep. Towards... Probably want to use the stairs. I don't imagine this is powered months into the apocalypse. Okay. So, Gabriel, you walk in, and yep. the group begins to follow you, Love and uh, you don't really think twice about the footsteps, no. and uh, you feel you trip over something. Cool. Um, in slow motion, everybody realizes Gabriel has tripped over some sort of tripwire, and we see a small metal pin attached to the string goes flying out of the wall and we see duct taped around the corner is a hand grenade (laughs) which goes off so you have sprung uh, what is called a trap Um, there are various traps (laughs) in the game you sprung my trap is that what they're called? Yep. Jeez. Uh, so uh, you all get to make a mobility roll to avoid this uh, if you fail, you suffer the effects of whatever the trap is. Uh, in this case, it is a basically a tripwire explosive type trap. So everybody, give me a mobility. Um, <laughs> all right. Off to a great start, boys. <laughs> Ooh, what's success? Uh oh. Right, bro. Michonne. Okay, oh. so Michonne, you failed. If you wish, you can do what's called a push. A push lets you reroll all your failures, but you automatically gain a point of stress, which also gets added to the next roll. Gotcha. I think not blowing up is probably a good idea, so I'm going to push. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. Sorry. And... and you got a walker. Oh, okay. Yeah. You messed up. <laughs> you messed up. <laughs> There's two grenades. <laughs> <laughs> This one's mostly on uh, Jabril, but yeah. The, the 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 first the first one was a flash grenade. Now it's actually an explosive grenade. No, it's so it is an actual explosive grenade which goes off. All right. So the way this works, it acts very similar to grenades in Aliens. This has a blast rating of eight, which means I roll eight dice, and if for every success you take a point of damage. Uh, so you might not take any damage here, uh, Joe. You might be lucky. 
Um, but you could get one shot at two, so we'll see. Yeah, there's only three HP. Not a single Gabe. one. All right, so Gabriel trips over the tripwire. The grenade goes off, but all of you react fast enough uh, that you're able to throw yourselves out of the way or into cover. This explosion goes off. The glass just gets blown out from the door. There's bits of drywall and ceiling, and there's smoke and dust everywhere, and it is echoing through the city street. A um, couple things uh, happen here. Hold on, I, gotta, I just lost my notes. Where we go? Um, but you're still alive. That's good. Uh... Okay, so the grenade going off, that is going to raise the threat level by one. No no if ands, or buts about that. Um, it's also going to increase the amount of walkers in the area, the swarm size, which you guys don't know the size of it yet because you've only seen a few, but I'm keeping track here in the distance. So whether it's zombies in the area or nearby zombies that are basically coming from quote-unquote off-map to join to see what the hell's going on, uh, it echoes throughout this entire place. Um, Michonne, you messing up, I feel like that needs to have some sort of uh, consequence here. Sure. Let's see. Uh, let's see what our suggestion list says. Uh, Oh, I have the perfect perfect thing. The reason you didn't take the damage is you threw one of your zombies in the <laughs> and sure, one of the walkers sure. just gets annihilated, and all that's left is a chain with a bit of gib hanging at the end. But that zombie, that walker, is completely annihilated. Okay. So you only get you only get a plus one bonus now from your uh, your talent. Sure, so you sure. Get, you get a new a new walker. <laughs> I mean, my drive is to find a way to start over amongst people I can trust, but uh, <laughs> a little bit less trust right now. I did not see that. Oh. It was dark. <laughs> and I only look oh. down when I'm praying. Damn. As long as you're all right. Jesus, that was yeah. cool. So let's get oh. out of here as soon as possible. Yeah, it was well, really nice. The <laughs> trap knows we're coming now, but yeah. there probably won't be any more up the stairs. They probably expected that to take off whoever's coming up here. Good point. Just gonna wait a few minutes for that ringing in my ears to go away, and then we can go up the stairs. All right. Well, you begin to make your way up the staircase. You do not see any more trip wires. You get to the second floor, and you can see that um, the door uh, is closed. Uh, the door up here is one of those solid metal doors, so there's no window. Um, it's got like the bar that you press, you know, kind of like in a gymnasium, uh, one of those types of doors. And uh, then the outside is like one of those handles, those uh, like L-shaped handles. Uh, but you don't obviously see anything. You can see the stairs go up to the third floor, and you do not hear nor see anything else in the stairwell. Do you think there'd be a way for us to either do a test or push the door just slightly, like an inch, and then check for maybe another wire that might be connected to the door? Uh, yeah, that would be a scout roll for sure. Okay. Um, I, I am not very scouty. Yeah. I'm um, scouty as fuck. <laughs> yeah, let's uh, let let him scout. Cool. Let, I'll take a few let, steps back. You're the, the man. Let the meta gaming begin. <laughs> he was throwing up those game signs. He's got to know what this is all about, <laughs> right, Carol? She's gonna stare at Carol. What is this yeah. inner city <laughs> Chicago? They they use grenades. <laughs> <laughs> grenades as gang signs. Yeah. Damn, gangs really <laughs> escalated. <laughs> we, we we don't have baseballs. We have grenades. Yeah. Yeah. Stick grenade. <clears throat> okay. The thug life. The thug life chose me. <laughs> We be scouting. Oh, oh no, we don't. Scouting. 
No uh, successes. You know what? Um, On seven dice, too. I know. Statistically, yeah. Not I, just, I just want to point out statistically that shouldn't have happened. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that scares me into pushing and into not pushing. So we'll just we'll we'll take the zero. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, so you open the door, like an inch or two. Nothing. You keep pushing it. There doesn't seem to be any trip wires. Cool. Uh, the second floor, from what you can see, looks similar to the first floor. Uh, it's dark. Pillars are set up the same way, and there's lots of cars everywhere. And you probably see a walker or two in the shadows milling about. Okay. Yeah, so so Glenn would turn around and say, uh I mean, let's be honest, the walkers are probably, if there are any walkers here, they're probably walking in your direction because they heard the explosion. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, but fuck. it doesn't seem like they actually see you, like because you're you're down low, like peeking out the bottom. Um, but yeah. you can like see like maybe some some feet shuffling under one of the cars. Yeah. I see two. Is there any way to go up higher, or do we have to get off here? You can go to the third floor from here. Yeah, let's go all the way to the third floor. Okay. All right, Glenn, I'll back his big head out of the doorway. <laughs> That's good info, too, if we're running down. All right. You make your way up to the third floor. Same thing. The staircase ends here, and there's just the big metal door with the, uh, you know, the, the long pushing the handle to open it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, yeah, I guess Glenn will try this one as well. Yeah. Alright. Uh, if you want to check for traps, you will need to make a scout roll. Okay. Here we go. Statistically. <laughs> okay. Alright. Alright. <clears throat> so, Glenn, you... Push the door open again. You do not see or detect any traps. Uh, the door opens. I believe it's on this side, the north side. Mm -hmm. um, so you open it, and you see uh, there are no walkers in your general vicinity, mm -hmm. but you do see when you look around to the right. Uh, oh, past this this white car, you can see the ambulance up here. Uh, mm -hmm. When you open the door, all of you can hear the music is much louder up here. And Glenn, you can tell it's coming from over by the ambulance somewhere. Um, you're not sure where, but it's over there. And okay. you can see around the ambulance, there is a swarm of probably at least a dozen to two dozen walkers. And it looks like they're trying to get into the ambulance. We could use a grenade right now. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's a lot of walkers. Yeah, I don't have anything to really distract them either. Unless they really like rice and cookies. Well, um, <clears throat> we could try to draw them over that way, and then. Uh, you know, just maybe hop back over or lead them downstairs and then zip up uh, through the staircase. How many successes did you have, Glenn? Two. Okay. You notice one other thing when you open the door. Hmm. It's brief, uh, but you catch a glint of light from over on the other side, somewhere between these two cars. Just for a second like uh almost like a mirror like sunlight shining off a mirror oh uh yeah i would point that out uh, did anybody see that over by that blue car no no the only just uh, you're the only one looking oh, oh okay um keep well, in yeah, mind you, you're, you're, low, you're low too so like okay you can you can like you maybe just look up and you see it for like a second and you put your uh -huh. head back down as you don't want to get spotted sure. by all those walkers but you definitely saw gotcha. something over there. Flash or shot. Okay. Um, 
Glenn would put his head back in and say, uh, I think there's someone across the uh, level. Maybe they're I think setting this, a trap. I think this might be another trap. Can we? Can you see where the music's coming from? Uh, yeah, the music's coming from uh, over by the ambulance. I think yeah. whoever's here is trying to lure people to go to the ambulance and yeah. <clears throat> probably taking a shot. Yeah. Is there um, like one of those concrete walls all around the whole thing? Yeah. Yeah, it's probably like, again, waist height, give or take. So if we crouched and crawled, we could maybe, maybe make it around to that other car where you saw the glint? Like the mirror? Uh, to... Yeah, I mean, you guys could at least make it around yeah. to this corner. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, we could also just go back down to floor two, and then hit the other stairwell and try to yeah, sneak around across. that way. I think that's. A I, good like idea that. well. yeah, I like that. I like that. Maybe hit them from both sides. We have some people fall across this way, and then two people come from that side. It's got to divert his attention, and then we. Okay. Use yeah. use him as bait for the for the walkers. Mm-hmm. Cool. Would you want okay. me to, like, stay here until I see you guys give some sort of signal from the other side? Yeah, you've got the gun, right? I do have the gun. Yeah. And I'm a knife. I've only got a knife, <laughs> so I'll be on the <laughs> other side. Yeah. Okay. Wait, who's only got a knife? I do. Oh, Father Gabriel, okay. Yes. I can, give you the, the can, I, can I give him the revolver? Sure. Um, I'm not very good at range combat, so I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, then I will hold on to the revolver. <laughs> okay. I've never used one of those before. Word of God comes from the heart, which is always very close to someone. If, if push comes to shove, some people say I have an innocent face. I might be able to knock them down if it comes to it. Okay. Any kind okay. of confrontation. Yeah. Sounds like a plan. So, uh... Yeah, I guess the preacher and I will go across the way, and we'll go up the stairs. Yeah. And then the two... Thing. Yeah. Okay. I will need we will go this way from the two of you that are sneaking. You guys okay. are going back to the second floor, right? And sneaking yes. through the garage? Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Alright. Ooh, no successes. I will have to push. Ooh. One. There we go. Okay. And then for the people that are staying on top, we do a, a roll as well? Uh, well? Let's do them first and see what they do. Okay. Uh, who else the, went with you? Who is the them? Me Who's and, sneaking yeah. right now? Me and Michonne. So. Okay. okay. Michonne. Yeah, we're going below, right? I yeah. didn't know if it was the sneaking across the top yeah. or sneaking across the bottom. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Uh, group on the second floor. Go ahead and, uh, okay. and sneak, please. Oh, Michonne again. I mean, you know. you messed up. Okay. Now it is it is worth noting, unlike an alien, uh, regardless of how much stress you have, uh rolling a walker does not change uh what happens. Uh, whether you roll one walker or five of them, uh whether you have one stress or ten, uh it's always just um it's just one. Uh you mess up or you don't. Also, it's worth noting that you can still succeed on your tests and roll a walker. Uh, unlike an alien, where once you get high enough stress, your stress takes over your action, you fail your action. In this game, uh, it's basically you succeed, but there's something bad that happens. Okay. So, um, you both pass. Uh, you guys are creeping along. You guys are probably about halfway across to the other staircase as you're crouching, making your way through. Uh, Michonne, uh, unfortunately, as you guys turn a corner, the back of your katana hits and smashes a window. It cracks, and uh, your your katana holster, the, the whatever it is, the scabbard, uh, gets caught. And you try to, like, pull it out, and as you do, the strap on it breaks. So okay. it's now... The strap doesn't work. You have to carry yeah. it. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yes. Got it. 
Um, and uh, yeah, that's all that uh, that's all that really that's bad. That Annoying, so but far. yeah. Uh, but you okay. guys do eventually make your way to the other side. Uh, what are the other two, Carol and? Uh, we're gonna. And I would, We're gonna try and sneak up right there, and wait yeah. to get a signal from the other guys that they're there. Okay, give me stealth rolls, please. Oh my God, Glenn! Come eight on, dice, dude. Eight dice and well, nothing. This this needs to happen. So here we go. Okay. And of course, I messed success. up. Um, you messed up. Yeah, you got too stressed now. Okay. So, Carol, you uh, you sneak out. You stay low. You get to the corner here. Uh, you're kind of waiting for Glenn as he's uh, coming behind you. Glenn, um, as you, you make your way out, you instinctively look in the direction of that blue car, uh, which you can see is a van, and you see the flash again, uh, and a shot of a rifle goes off. And, well, let's see if you're hit. You totally called oh, no. it. Uh, do I can I roll the actual weapon or do I the wall give a bonus or anything unfortunately no, no because he's 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 kind of out in the open as this is happening and this this person noticed when you guys opened the door the first time so they're <laughs> they're waiting do I just the NPC sheets are different. I'm trying to still figure them out. But why can't I? Let me just check something here. I'm just going to do a test roll on one of your character sheets and see how this works. Nope. Nope. Oh, that's... Okay. Does that work how it works here? Okay, so if you want to make an attack with a weapon, you have to left-click on the icon of the item. And then mm. your your roll box comes up. Uh, uh -huh. So a loud single shot goes off, Glenn. There is one success. You are Shit. struck in the shoulder, taking two damage. As oh no! You all hear a single loud shot go off. Boom. You manage to get to the cover over here. Your backs are against this wall. You're down on your butts. Uh, you're up next to Carol. You can see that he's bleeding from a shot in his shoulder. <clears throat> and I think that's a great place to take our break. <laughs> nice. So, uh, Joe and Travis, we usually take about a five, ten minute break. Go uh, use the bathroom, grab some Dr. Pepper. Uh, you yeah, know, sounds good. Pray to the dark gods, whatever you need to do. And, uh, yeah, we will be back. All right, do, cool. it, do it, peace. BRB. All right, so we are back, listeners and viewers, and I think we need to change the music up to a little something more scary and tense. So, a little more, a little more gunshot woundy. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, for Michonne. And Gabriel, down on the second floor, you hear the shot go off, clearly from up above you. What do the two of you do? That son of a bitch was right. Let's go. Yep. Start racing up. Yeah, we're going to, two at okay. a time, up the stairs, okay. dragging the to... zombies. <laughs> <laughs> you get to the stairwell, you open up the door, and when you get inside, you see that this stairwell has been filled with all sorts of debris and detrius and obviously barricades. Um, it's going to take some time and effort to get through this stuff. Uh, you can do one of two things. You can either attempt a force roll to start moving this shit out of the way, or you can attempt a mobility roll to try to start climbing and find a way over it. Um, either way, it's going to slow you down. And if you try to climb, you're probably not going to be able to bring the zombie with you. 
I'm decent at force. Actually, I'm the same at force and mobility. Yeah, we're talking um, like someone grabbed all the items in the room from a from a Dead Rising level and just piled them here. There's like a bench, a garbage can, a filing cabinet, a shopping cart. It's like, you know, you can get through it, but it'll take time. Yeah. Uh, it's either go through or we go back and we just rush the guy. We gotta go through. Okay. Uh, I'm not good at force, but I'm uh, slightly better at mobility. I'm actually... Okay. Yeah, we'll better. climb our way through then. Yeah. Alright, go for it. <laughs> oh my Two god, the show. I'm the worst at this game. Bro, you know? <laughs> we should bring you on to Alien, actually. That's oh, a lot. Man. It's very Every similar, roll. but a lot more fun. Wow. <laughs> like, literally, the three or four <laughs> times in a row. I think it's, That's... yeah. Perpetually and you only have one away. stress. I don't even have to give a stress out. This is <laughs> going downhill fast. Okay. So the two of you begin uh, trying to climb your way up. All right. And uh, Gabriel, you're quite spry for a older guy who doesn't get out much. Um, you begin clambering your way over uh, some of the detrius. You eventually get up to the landing, and then you're able to go up the next flight of the stairs that leads up to the act where the door is. Um, right. Shown, you start climbing. You have to leave the your walker behind, but okay. with the door closed, he can't really go anywhere. He's just kind of wandering around on the on the the landing here. We'll pick him up. Um, yeah, you start climbing your way up, and as you do, uh, the sh there's a shopping cart you try to climb on and your weight pushes it when your foot is against it. The shopping cart goes to the left and you slip and your foot falls through and then you hear and feel something grab your leg. Oh, and there is a walker underneath some of this debris and it tries to attack you. Uh, so, walkers. Fortunately, I have a katana in my hand right now. That's good. <laughs> It's good. Um, so, here's how walkers attack when okay. they happen. So, generally, if a single walker attacks you, you get to choose any skill you want to try to defend yourself. Uh, okay. But obviously, it has to make sense. So, if you want to use, you know, tech, for example, you have to have something in the story that will allow you to do that. Whatever sure. skill you use... You tell us how you're going to you do it, and then you make the roll. If you pass, then you successfully fend it off, and you kill it. But if you fail, then we roll on the walker attack table, of which is a D66 table. And as you can imagine, with a free league game with a D66 table, it can get pretty bad. <laughs> uh, so, what would you like to do? You can feel it grab your leg. Yeah. You hear it. You know it's a walker. You can maybe see it like through the, the bottom of the shopping cart. You know, there's stuff in the way, but you can see it. What do you do? All right. Well, this lady's a badass. She's grabbing the sword. It's grabbing my leg. I'm just going to chop, like, the hand off of the walker okay. with the katana. Dig it. All right. Make uh, close combat, I think, would be appropriate here. Again, okay. click on the icon of the weapon, because uh, all your items in this game, you if it says bonus, that's how many bonus dice it gives you. Yeah, it gives me two. So if you click on the actual picture of the katana, it should bring up the dice oh, yeah, rolling box, nice. and then it should have it all in there. Love it. I oh mean, my god. Oh. Ten dice and not a single success. Would you like to push? Yeah, I'm going to push. Okay. There we go. Okay. And Bro. no, no, uh, no walkers. Okay, just barely. So you slice at it the first time, the blade gets... It bangs against the shopping cart. You take it back and swing a second time. Perfect clean cut. The hand comes off and the shopping cart and uh, this filing cabinet kind of get loose and pin it back down. And you can see it's like stump of a hand. You know. But you're safe. You're unharmed. Um, so... Gabriel, you are able to get to the top of the staircase. Uh, Michonne, it'll take you another round because you didn't have any successes and you're you're floundering. Uh, but Gabriel, you get to the I'll top of the stairs, and uh, the 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 this one, the actual door itself, is barricaded. You will need to do a force here to get this stuff out of the way. 
Uh, I'll give it a shot. So, Chris, in the meantime, mm-hmm. one of my basic gear is basic medical gear. Yes. Uh, oh, yeah. Once Glenn gets to cover, would I be able to go to cover with him and try to maybe patch him up while we're waiting for our other two yes. buddies? Yes, we'll hop right back to the guys as soon as, whoops, as soon as this is done. Something just went flying across the room. Must be ghosts. Okay. Uh, to your surprise, Gabriel, you give the door a big shoulder shove and you knock. There's a couple like, uh, there's like a bench propped up against it. You manage to just throw the whole thing open. The bench goes flying out of the way. The door flies open and you find yourself right here uh, as you basically stumble out. Okay. Meanwhile, while this is going on, Carol and Glenn, you guys are up against this barricade over here. Uh, what does the medical gear do, Carol? Uh, let's see. It says needed to treat injuries with the B bag, B tag. I'm not okay. sure. Okay. So, just like an alien, when you suffer an injury, some of them are lethal, uh, some of them are not. Uh, so this allows you to treat ones that are basically not lethal. Uh, but otherwise, you can still make a medical aid test to try to fix him up. So um, basically, you make a test. For every success you get, you can uh, restore a lost wound. Okay. Um, do I click the... It doesn't look like I can click the icon for this, though. No, but you do get it says bonus one, so be sure you add a bonus die ah. because you do have the gear. So you still get a you still get an advantage for having it, even though you're not using it to treat an actual critical injury. Okay. Bonus one and we'll roll. Nice. Okay. Glenn, you get a point of health back unless Carol wants to push. Uh you got two damage on you, right? Correct. Uh, I'm going to try and do that because Carol really wants to to help out her <clears throat> group. So I'm going to. Okay. Uh oh. Okay. You do uh, succeed. However, you mess Ooh. up. And there's actually a table we can roll here. If you go to your rollable tables, Travis, you'll see there's one that says. Uh... Oh, I'm sorry. That's for stabilizing. You're not stabilizing. You're just healing him. Okay, then. Let's see. What's. Uh... I think we'll say your medical supplies run out. You use the last bits of bandage and gauze uh, on him, and that is all you have left. So your medical gear is done for. All right. Still worth it. Yeah. I mean, you're frantic. You're under fire. You can see there's a horde of zombies, you know, over by the uh, thing. They haven't noticed you guys. You know, he's bleeding pretty badly, so you're kind of rushing and just throwing stuff all over the place. You're trying to get your gear out. Um, So you use it up or, you know the rest gets scattered around the floor, but he is more or less back to full. Now, obviously you got shots, you're still a little fucked up, but uh, for game turn purposes, (laughs) in capacity here, so. Okay. All right. Uh, Jeez, thank you. As you finish patching up, you guys probably have a few minutes before they would actually come through the other side, so what do you guys do after you patch him up? You hear another gunshot go off, and you hear something hit the concrete near where you guys are standing, or sitting. Uh, I guess I'd see if either the zombies, and maybe occasionally look around, like, uh, what's it, this corner? Just to see if they're not trying to flank us or something. No, you don't see anything when you look around that corner. You can see the door to the other stairwell. There's nothing in between you and it. Um, yeah, and it seems, seems like the zombies are too distracted by the music over and whatever is going on at the uh, ambulance. Gotcha. Then I, I, I guess I'd ask Glenn like, stay until we, until our friends <clears throat> could uh, back us up, stay in cover. Uh, Glenn would not, and he he would have uh, taken out his uh, his pistol, just to okay. kind of be at the ready. Yeah, and I'm, I'll do the same. Okay. All right. Uh, at this point, Gabriel, you throw the door open. Yes. Uh, Michonne is still making her way up the second half of the stairs. Uh, what do you do? Uh, you can do- see Glenn and Carol up against the barricade. Uh, you can see 
some of the medical gear scattered around. Obviously, she's been working on him. He still seems to be alive. Uh, they're probably looking in your direction when you throw the door open. Um, I will uh, wait until I hear like another shot, and then I'm gonna try to sprint to this yeah. uh, car and like h slide in behind it and hide. Okay, so you wait a moment, and then you do hear another shot go off, and you've got the door open, right? And so the door opens, uh, it opens out, so it's, um, I can use a little drawing tool here that I was messing around with earlier. Where is it? Here we go, draw free hand. So the, the doors open up like this, right? Okay. Okay. You're standing here in the middle. And so the, you hear a bullet hit the door, and you're basically using it as a shield. Nice. And you actually probably see a little indentation, <laughs> uh, like, right by your face. <clears throat> Some fuck. But it does I, not go I, through. Okay, great. And then I run to the first car. Okay. He's got to run out of bullets eventually. All right. You don't <laughs> like, have to make a... Well, I think you should make a mobility test to see more or less if, you, if something goes wrong. Um... Not so much that you need to make cover. Okay, it's fine. Uh, so you get around. Uh, you do see there's two other vehicles there, uh, but you're more just trying to get to cover, so you don't really see where the person is that's shooting at you. Right. And uh, you hear another shot go off, and one of the windows of the car you're hiding behind shatters. Okay. Okay. Um. So in our gear, do we know how many bullets we actually have? So bullets are done ab abstractly in this game. Um, the idea is that you have enough bullets to last like a firefight or two. But uh, if, you, if something goes wrong when you're shooting, for example, you've probably run out of ammo. Ah, okay. <clears throat> so, or the in the case of, like the revolver, we said it only has one bullet. But... So the past couple shots have gone at the Preacher. Have the other two been able to like pinpoint where exactly well yeah what are you two doing now so you see gabriel come out you hear a shot go off you can tell it's aimed at him and then you see him duck around and duck behind that car and you see another shot go off and uh give me a uh well you probably need to at this point because glenn you you knew where to look you can see laying on the top of this yeah. van there is a figure that is laying down with a rifle aimed at him and then as this is happening you do see that they then turn they're going back and forth between the two the two of you so i think this is a good time to go into how initiative works in this game mm. which is a little bit different than really any Ooh. rpg that i've seen so there's two types of combat in walking dead there's a duel which is where there's like a one-on-one -on -one fight or maybe just a, a couple people, uh, or there's a brawl, which is when you have like a big ass fight. Um, the brawl has more of the interesting initiative, but I really think it's just you guys versus this one person right now. So I think a duel is more appropriate. Mm -hmm. So really the only thing that matters here is range bands. And it does range just like an alien. You have a uh, short, long, uh, extreme, um, and that's it. They don't even have engaged. It's just short, long, and, and extreme. So I would say right now you guys mm -hmm. are at long range uh, because you're not quite close enough to make a close combat attack. You got to get into short range of that. So she's basically one ramp, yeah, one range band away from you guys. Um, so uh, I believe we just kind of say what we're going to do and then we make rolls for that. Okay. So um, there's not really an initiative order here because it's just a handful of people. And since you guys are all on the same team, there's only one enemy right now. We don't have to worry about initiative so much. So um, <clears throat> I know what this person's going to do. I already have that in mind. So each of you tell me what you want to do and then we'll kind of play it out. I've heard quite a few gunshots um, at this point. I've crawled over a bunch of things on my way to get here. Is there any object that is throwable? Oh, sure. There's probably like a bottle or sure. uh, like a rock in the stairwell with all this yeah, other yeah. stuff. 
bottle's perfect. Okay. Yeah, so, well, I for me, or for Carol, I'm, I assume Glenn would have like pointed like he's at the top of that car. And so uh, what I would try and do is, since I just heard the last shot go off, I would try to just barely pop out from cover, take a shot at the top of the roof, and then go back down into cover. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I will point out, because yeah. this is a, a decent uh, thing of the game, in this game, if you are in cover, uh, if you have the bonus of cover, which currently all of you do, because you're out of light of sight or you're behind something, um, if somebody shoots at you with a ranged attack, it takes an extra success to hit you. So it'll normally take two successes before they hit you, rather than just one. Okay. Um, nice. If you end up shooting okay. at each other, it becomes an opposed roll. But if it's against... Uh, if it's not an opposed roll, then you just make an, a roll straight up to see if you succeed. But if you're shooting at each other, it's kind of like consider you're in like a gunfight with each other. So you're both trying to take cover, both trying to shoot each other. And so it becomes an opposed roll. And then whoever wins the roll, well, depending on what happens, you actually can both hit each other. You could both miss. One person could hit, one person could miss. Um, so with that in mind, uh, so Carol, you're shooting. Okay, makes sense. Glenn, how about you? Uh, yeah, I think Glenn would have the same idea. You know, we've heard that there's been a pause between shots, so that tends to mean he's racking. So that would give us some time to shoot. All right, Gabriel. Gabriel's going to start army crawling underneath the car towards the next car. <laughs> okay. All right. And Michonne, you got your bottle. What are you going to do? Yeah, I'm going to hide behind this door here. And yep. I'm going to be looking. Is it, you said it was solid metal? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to get down. So I'm not at like normal head level. Okay. And I'm going to wait on the bottle for when this person looks like they might be shooting. And then I'm going to throw the bottle to like make a crashing sound to make them maybe like look away just for a second. Where are you throwing the bottle? Towards like, the van? Yeah, towards the van. Like about okay. the arrow-ish sign maybe? <clears throat> yep. Okay. So Carol and Glenn, you guys are going to make ranged attacks because you're shooting. Uh, Gabriel, you are going to make a, I think a stealth to avoid getting seen. And Michonne, um, let's see like just as I want to shoot to like you know the one second distraction uh I'll let you pick you can do a ranged attack you can do survival or manipulation because I think all of those make sense that you're trying to distract them okay and uh Kyle uh she is turning to shoot at you guys yep and since you are the closest target she's going to be shooting at you so it'll be an opposed roll for you okay should I make my survival okay. roll now yeah, everybody make your rolls, and then I'll kind of explain uh, what happens here. Where's this NPC? Yeah. All right. Whatever that is, it's good. Tell us what you got, please. Gabriel got one success. So is this, like, opposed? So uh, I would have to... It's, it's only opposed for Kyle because she's shooting at him. Okay, then I got one success. Okay. Uh, Carol, uh, I have one success. Michonne with zero again. That's typical. <laughs> Would you like to push? Damn. No, no, I'm good. I'm good. Okay. All that right. has not been going well for me. <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so um, Michonne, you throw the bottle, but it doesn't land anywhere near as far as you want. And it actually it lands on the corner like this, and it doesn't break. <laughs> Like ah, uh, uh, yep. Uh, Gabriel, you make it underneath, no problem. You get to the next car. You have a clear line of sight of the person. I mean, they're in cover because they're laying down and they're up on top of the roof, so you can't see much of them. But you yep. can see the end of the rifle, and it's pointed at the other two, and the shot goes off. Uh, Carol and Glenn begin opening fire, and I will do a ranged attack for this person with their gun. Kyle, do you wish to push? You have one success. I ask because uh, you're <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, I probably should. Okay. Oh, boy. Okay. 
you succeed, but you also mess up. All right. So two successes and Carol's got two or one success. So um, she had zero successes on her shot at you, Kyle. Oh, so the man. shot hits the concrete right where you're standing and chips. Some, some concrete goes up in your face. But the two of you, Carol and Glenn, start opening fire. Glenn, you're more just spraying to try to hit something. Uh, you empty your clip as you, you mess up. You go through the rest of them as you're shooting left and right. Uh, Carol, though, because she's not aiming at you, you get a beat on this person and you do hit them. Uh, you deal two damage. And Glenn, you succeeded as well and you, you beat her. Um, so you actually have an extra success, which in combat, it just always goes to damage. So in this case, just like an alien, you have a total of, uh, of three damage here. Um, so the two of you shoot, and you can tell she is hit, and you see her roll over the edge of the uh, the side of the uh, the van that she's on top of. Gabriel, from where you are down on the ground, you see her. She gets hit. She kind of like loses her balance and tries to roll off. She gets hit again as she's rolling, and when she hits the ground, she's very clearly dead. Way to go, guys. I was hoping she would give her the Hail Mary. (laughs) The coup d'etat. All right. What do you do now? Do the zombies notice, or walkers, I'm sorry, do they notice anything that's happening? They do now with all the gunshots. The threat level has gone up to three, which means they actually start to notice you guys. You see a couple of them begin to peel away from the ambulance and they begin to shamble their way in your direction uh they probably at some point see everybody except gabriel because everybody is up popping up out of cover standing by the door uh gabriel being down on the ground they probably don't see you yet but you can tell they are making their way towards you and um i believe stress goes up by one when we hit threat level three but let me double check that do we even think this ambulance has medical supplies? It's being used for bait. <laughs> we gotta hope, right? <laughs> or maybe he has all the, yeah. the medicine. Oh, That's yeah. what I would have done. I would have taken all the medicine and Yeah. So maybe we quickly all Go to the, the, the van. Go to here. Yeah. See where the walkers go as we maybe sneak a little bit more maybe not sneak, but maybe <clears> run there now. Okay, yes, everybody's stress goes up by one because you realize now the walkers okay. know that you're here and they're actively coming for you. Um, <laughs> everybody, <laughs> I'll give you guys one action before they start to uh, really close in on you and and make some headway. I mean, you got a little bit of time here, so... But, uh, yeah, what does everybody do? So I'll go check the body. Okay. Yeah. See if there's anything that cures pneumonia. <laughs> and I'm going to go try and see if I could get there fast enough to check the car, start checking the car for stuff. <clears throat> uh, the van? Yeah, the van. The yeah. van that she okay. was on top of. And so everybody goes over here, it sounds like, to check it out? Yeah, I will also okay. be looking at the van. Alrighty. So, you see it is a woman that you have been fighting. Uh, She looks like she's probably in her mid to late 40s, and uh, she's got kind of longer brown hair that's starting to turn gray. Uh, She had it in a ponytail. Looks like she was uh, probably of Latina descent. Uh, She's got a little bit of bags under her eyes, sharp angular face. Uh, She's wearing just a pair of um, like, uh, like old dirty khakis. You know, like with uh, like those big extra pockets, and then she's got a tan shirt with uh, like a kind of a brownish jacket or overcoat on. Um, she had a sniper rifle, which is on the ground next to her, and you can see does she have anything else on her. Let's check. Uh, you see that she's got a knife tucked into her boot, and who's checking the body? Was it Gabriel? Yeah. Okay. Um, no need to roll a search here. Uh, you do find that she has some sort of remote control in her pocket. Uh, you click it, and the music to the radio, which you can tell is somewhere over by the ambulance, turns off. Right. 
Uh, other than that, Arceus. Um, no, no car keys on her. Uh, you do notice, however, uh, there is, um, one of, like, the pillars that holds up the wall is, like, right next to where the van is. You see on the outside of that pillar, on the outside of the parking garage, there is a rope ladder that's been set up. Uh... <laughs> it goes down to the second floor. <laughs> Could have... Oh, we could have snuck up there. Ooh. <laughs> um. Okay. Uh, can I grab her sniper rifle? Absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead and uh, grab one out of the uh, the weapons thing there. Um. Yeah, she doesn't have anything else on her. And you try the van, and it's locked. Yeah. Everybody give me a scout roll while this is going on. If you choose. Optional. You don't have to. Kept. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Wow. It's all falling wow, apart dude. now. Messed up, messed up, messed up. Oh my I, god! I, I see Michonne chose not to roll here. I abstained. For <laughs> probably, this probably one. wisely. <laughs> okay, so Carol, uh, as you're looking around, you notice you see movement inside the ambulance. You can tell there's at least two people in there. Oh, like uh, as an like actual people or walkers. Looks like humans. Oh, okay. I'll relay that to the group. Uh, that... However, uh, you both mess up. Um, as you guys are discussing this, you're checking the body, you're checking the, the van, you see the ladder, you're trying to decide what to do. Um, the threat has gone up by one as the walkers are closing in, and they basically are here and here coming around the sides. Uh, you see uh, one actually stumbles out of the doorway, and he's missing a hand. No. That's storytelling right there, folks. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, uh, yeah, they're going to be on you next round if you don't do something. Or you're going to have to fight uh, your way Either way. Jump down. Glenn's gonna, yeah. No, Glenn's going to turn to the group and say, yeah, rope rope ladder and then we just traverse across and go up the the staircase yeah. again we have to get that ambulance now <laughs> like yep. can all of us see. go down the rope ladder before they get to us probably not because you have to get up on the side right then like reach out sideways to get to it right, right. because the, the pillar goes like up a little yep. bit right uh and then you can see that it only goes down to the second floor and then you then have to, while you're hanging, try to reach your foot down to like get around the side of the pillar. It's it's not easy. And right. you guys have never done it before. Like you're guessing, she's probably done it a couple times. She's probably okay at doing it. But so maybe going across the wall. So maybe like one or two <clears throat> people go down the rope ladder, and then the rest jump over the yeah the wall. No, 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 no. Go go back through the staircase because. Fight, well, fight your way staircase. at least through the stair. I know, but the the easiest way is they'll see you go through the door. They'll be attracted to that door. You guys r then run back through the second floor There's to the like other staircase. And they there. won't see you coming yeah, there, from the aren't other there like staircase. a bunch of zombies over by the door? There's, There's, yeah, like... <clears throat> There's one that stumbled out so far, but then the rest at this point, they've made their way yeah. around. They've made their way like this way. So now they're here at the corner, coming yeah, around the corner, no and then they're here at this corner, coming around the corner. Yeah, there's no way. There, All right, there's yeah. probably about then six we'll, on each then, side. Then, yeah. In well, total, a... I would say there's probably about 20-ish zombies up here. I mean, if there's only six okay. towards the door, then yeah, we can probably do it. I was imagining there was like 12 and 12 on each side. But if there's only six, there's four of us, guys. We're fucking king. No, because there's still a bunch by the ambulance trying to get at the people inside. 
You can okay. tell that's why they're not all getting distracted. There, there's some that are focused on the people inside. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if we want to go kill the zombies over here and <clears> then <throat> lure them towards the door and make our way down and back up, we should do that. I'll follow. Uh, you guys all are... right. But <laughs> it's the Walking Dead. We gotta go big or go home. Okay. All right. Cool. So we are gonna fight an actual, uh, a small swarm here. Nice. Um, so a brawl. <laughs> no, fighting swarms work a little differently. Uh, brawls are for when you're fighting humans or oh. living living things. So this is the way it works. Whenever you're oh. fighting a swarm, right? So once once a, a swarm is at least five zombies up to uh, a thousand, which is uh, the biggest oh. they get. <laughs> um, so basically, a swarm Whoa. is a group a group of walkers. Okay. Uh, the way it works. Uh, the more there are, obviously, the more dangerous they are. But with the way this works is um, once they get up to this point and once they get close enough, which they're about to be, um, you guys are fighting as a group to fight your way through. So each round, uh, until this ends, you have to try to fight off the group. And the way this works is up to three players... Uh, and even if there's less than three people in the group, then a, one person has to make multiple rolls. They get progressively harder because you're trying to fight multiple zombies at once. So you choose up to three of you to uh, make rolls to try to fight your way through. The other person can either do an assist or they can use their leadership skill if they uh, have leadership to try to give orders to the group. Um, but basically, you uh, you guys make it a, a roll, uh, whether it's, um, I think it's just combat rolls, I think. Okay. Uh, like, if we have a pistol, would we be able to use the, the pistol's bonus and stuff like that? Or... Yes, yes. Uh, yep, yep. <clears throat> so you win and lose as a group by comparing the number of successes against the swarm threat... And the swarm threat is calculated by the swarm size. Oh, adding the swarm size to the current threat level. Okay. So you guys can use whatever skills you want, just like before when uh, when Joe was dealing with the one walker. Um, obviously, the combat ones make the most sense, but if you've got something else you want to try. Uh, so first of all, we need to know which three of you are going to make the rolls, and what rolls are you going to make? I am actually, like, super decked out in leadership, apparently, so I'll stand in the back just delegating. <laughs> okay. And uh, so the actual, the number of successes you need, it is uh, swarm size and threat level. Well, it's currently threat level four, and this is only a swarm size of uh, one. But if you guys don't pass this round, it's going to be bigger because they're all going to be on top of you. It'll be swarm size two. So you guys need a total of five successes between the three of you. Well, four and then, of you. Okay. What does my leadership do? So leadership, it's just like leadership in uh, Alien. You give an order, and for every success you get, you can give a bonus dice to someone who does whatever you say. If you get multiple successes, you can hand them out however you see fit. Cool. So if you get three successes, you can put all three on one person or give one to each person. Sure, sure. Is that so, a bonus die or a bonus success to the people? It's a bonus die. Okay. Which is not not bad. So I will, uh, you know, like kill the ones close to us so we can get down that doorway. All right. Hey. Oh yeah. Three okay. successes. Sick. Um. So I guess one. I'll give one to each one. Okay. Everybody, make whatever roll you'd like and add a plus one bonus on top of whatever your gear may give you. Uh-oh. Oh my god, Michonne, come on. <laughs> hey, I got a success at least. You know, that cancels out, right? Glenn! <laughs> okay, Glenn messed up too, but Glenn, with four successes, puts the <laughs> team on his back. Because without him, he'd be <laughs> fucked. So, uh... You guys have a total of six successes. You needed five, so you do win. Um, let's see. So if you get the total number of successes equal to a greater than the swarm threat, and the swarm is three or lower, uh, swarm, I'm sorry, the swarm size is three or lower, you win the fight. Okay. 
The threat level goes down to zero, one, or two is decided by the GM and depending on the situation that fits your story. As oh, long yeah. as the swarm size is three or less, you only need to win one round to end the fight, either because you kill all the walkers or you manage to run away and hide. If the swarm is four or higher, winning a round means you just reduce the step by one of the swarm. So it's like that scene when they're defending Alexandria and Rick just goes ham and then everybody makes the circle of death and fights their way through like, you know, 300 walkers. Uh, but there's only, you know, a dozen or so. And in the meantime, Gabriel <clears throat> presses the button to turn the music back on. And he's like, yeah. it's the yeah. final <laughs> count. <laughs> and we're to blast our way to the door. I like it. I love it, Travis. <laughs> Okay, um, I do love it, but you did mess up here. So, um, <laughs> Glenn, uh, well, first of all, Glenn, your pistol was out of ammo. Oh. Oh, yeah, he would have the revolver, though, still. And he had one shot. It kills okay, shoot so <laughs> one so here, shot. Here's what I think. I think Glenn, realizing the well, group I throw is, it at him. Might, be, might be fucked here, just starts bashing yeah. zombies in the head with the gun, right? Just goes ham. But he puts himself in danger. You are going to get attacked because you you kill like most of the six that are over here. Um, Michonne, you rush up to help. Uh, Carol, you pop one in the head. Michonne, you manage to cut one, the one that had the one hand that you attacked earlier. You drive your sword through his head and you kill him, right? But as you do a second zombie stumbles out of the stairwell and tries to grab your arm. So each of you are going to get attacked. And I think it's just like before where we... Uh, let's see. Yeah, you each got to suffer a single attack. So I need the two of you to make whatever roll you'd like to defend yourselves. Same thing as last time. Yep. <clears throat> Ooh. So Glenn, uh, you could if you want to shoot, you'd have to use the other gun. Uh, yeah. And I do not get the bonus die this time, right? Uh, from the correct. And yeah, just, just yeah, not from the leadership. Oh my god! Eleven <laughs> or, dice, no successes. I guess I gotta push, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 New song. Go. Push it Much to better. the limit. That's the point of no right. return. Here comes the one shot. Oh, but you messed up. Oh, I no. did. It didn't show on my screen. Yeah, if you, if you open, if you press, if you press the dice, it opens up a drop down. It shows you all your dice results. Gotcha. Because I only saw good stuff. Okay, Glenn, with that last bullet in the revolver. This last zombie who's about to latch onto you, you just put the gun right under his chin and pff, pop him. Uh, <clears throat> hmm. You messed up while defending yourself. Oh. Okay, so here's what I think happens, Michonne. This thing takes you off guard. It okay. lurches out of the doorway. It basically tackles you and knocks you to the ground. As you do, you get your sword up, and it basically impales its head on the sword and it's dead but you bang your head against the concrete and take right. a point of damage okay. as it knocks you to the ground that group of oh. zombies is dead the other group is coming towards you I'm going to put this back down to uh, I would say two because by this time we'll assume you guys run into the uh, stairwell and close the door behind you well, I, I have actually a question Yes. there's all the zombies by the other by the ambulance right now, right? There's, yes. But keep in mind, there were two groups closing in on you. Gotcha. And I, I only counted it because otherwise the target number would have been higher to defend sure. yourselves. So the other group is, uh, do they actually give me tokens for zombies? Let me see. So we're gonna have to fight those other ones anyways. Yeah. But I mean, they're, still, they're over there. We can just all start racking up guns and just all right, I'm just gonna put this token Gun. here. It's it's not an alligator. Gun. Gun. <laughs> I, hear, well, I, I got the sniper. Carol's got the oh, pistol yeah, she beat her husband right to death with. Yeah, we'll just allegedly, allegedly, oh, allegedly. Right. <laughs> okay. All right. There's no proof. Okay. So yeah, there's this. What the fuck? Oh, I. Oh, you can't drag tokens in this. What? It's just arrow. Freely. What happens? No, I can drag. <laughs> I, I can't. Like 
<laughs> teleporting what zombie. Fuck? What the fuck? Okay, well, okay, so this is where the other group of zombies are. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then there's a, the big group is over here by the ambulance. There's about oh, 10 or 12 by the ambulance. I think ring around the rosy is a little bit easier. Yeah. You guys can decide if you, know? you if you break line of sight and close the door, then obviously um, you don't They're have to They're probably just going to go back you. this way, though. But it's up to you. So, yeah, I think like ring around the well, rosy. If we, if we, well, if we ring around the rosy, they'll still surround us again. I'll, I'll tell you guys this. If you break line of sight and close the door, the threat's going to go down to two because they don't actively see you. If you guys stay up here and try to go around, the threat is only going to go down to three. Because they're still going to see you. Even if you duck behind the barricade, okay. they're going to start following you. Let's okay. take a few minutes. Go down. Yeah. Let's calm down. Maybe we'll find some weapons and... on the second floor. Yeah. We can search, right? All right. You guys make your way let's, into the stairwell. You guys have to climb. I want to make you guys test. Uh, but you can see this other zombie climbed out from underneath some of the rubble. You see some of the, the debris is shifted. Uh, mm -hmm. You guys make your way down. You have to climb or move some of the stuff. There's no more walkers down here as you clear this. Get back down me, there's the one floor. walker down here. <laughs> the chain. <laughs> I'm glad oh, that's right. That's right. He's still there. Back. All right. Uh, you guys get back down to the second floor, and uh, it's there's probably still a walk or two wandering around, but nothing nearby. Um, one thing that you do notice now that you're down here on the second floor near the north wall, uh, you notice that there is a bunch of cars that are parked extremely close together, and you can see they've been parked also in such a way that they seem to make like a barricade. When you guys get a little closer, you can see inside that barricade is uh, like a limo. Big ass black limousine with a sunroof that is uh, currently closed. And then you can see that there's all these cars have been parked around it to make like a barricade. They're also incredibly close together where you could basically just walk along the top of them. Most of them are like vans or trucks. Gotcha. So it makes you yeah. home. We should check out that limousine. That's what it looks like. Yeah, I'm down. Maybe they Let's put do the uh, stuff in there. Yeah. Yeah, as long as the other group starts mm -hmm. moving that way, I'm going to start moving. Yeah. yeah. All right. That way. Yeah. Ben's our scout, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Do we have to stealth or... Uh, you will still need to stealth because there are still walkers around here. They, the ones down here don't know where you guys. They haven't noticed you guys. Oh, question. So, before we had to increase our stress by one because of the zombie threat. Zombie yes. threat went down. Does that decrease our stress? No. No. Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, you, you never know. It was good a good question. No, it was good good question. question. It was a good question, but the reply is just. Of, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But why, why would you uh, get to have fun? Oh yeah. no no no, my dear Travis! No 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 no. 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 Hey, I'm only you know in my mid forties. Osteoporosis is kicking in. Yeah. <laughs> osteoporosis. Damn, dude, drink some more milk, bro. Yeah, like <laughs> a lot going on here, my friend. We yeah. might need to talk about this. Yeah, don't don't tell me that, man. I'm about to hit the big four zero. I don't want to want to hear that. That's true. Right. Well, I guess I've been you know. Oh boy, are we doing stealth rolls? I I guess we are. Yeah, yeah I, I, I thought we were. Was, I thought Glenn was going over by himself. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, if you two do, if you two just want to stand there while the two of them stealth away, that's fine. Yeah, I mean, okay, but like Glenn kind of like tripped, up, right? <laughs> yeah, I mean, okay, I guess we're all going. It's it's fine. Come whatever. on, guys. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, easy. Damn, Gabriel. Gabriel's so just gonna start like walking on walls. Or walking on water? Oh yeah, well, is there like a puddle of water he can just you know levitate over? <laughs> Arms spread Mich wide like Michonne, Magneto. do you stealth or do you just chill where you're at? Oh, should have chilled. I mean, <laughs> I messed up. I mean, there's. Goodness. Okay. Uh, let us. I gotta keep it in theme. Yeah. 
Okay. <laughs> How she well, survived guys, this long. You guys all get there. Oh, that's not the problem. Um, I'm going to say... I'm going to roll dice here. Uh, uh, one of you is getting attacked by a walker that you don't see. Perhaps coming out from under a car. Uh, sure. Low will be Michonne. High will be Glenn. Glenn, I need a defensive roll as you uh, make your way past a car. A hand reaches out from under, grabs you. You hear the zombie ah, ah, trying to bite you in the ankle. Um. Ooh. Uh, I mean, could I use mobility <clears throat> to try and roll away or something? Sure. Yeah. All right. We'll try that. Well, I mean, I'm out of all sorts of ammo. <laughs> beat it to death with your empty guns <laughs> they, they are made of metal and are absolutely a bludgeon uh this is actually this actually would be a higher test but um let's see oh man nice. okay so you uh you manage to kick this thing you bring your foot down you hear the wrist crack and the arm is at a disgusting angle. Uh, it's trying to pull itself out from under the car. Um, and But as you do this, you're like, you smash it, and you're like so excited that you, you do this, right? You're like, yeah! And that kind of echoes through, and you can hear <laughs> and see a couple other zombies kind of turn in your direction as uh, the threat level goes up. And oh, uh, man. you guys realize... Um, the jig is up. They're coming towards you. There's not there's not many down here, but the ones that are here have, have noticed you guys and are moving towards you. Michonne, uh, you... No, oh, let's see. They really need a chart for this one to roll on. Because just constantly upping the... Yeah, let's not roll, yeah. Is not, uh... Maybe similar to, like, dropping an item in uh, Alien, you lose one of your inventory things. I'm going to say this, since since Michonne, you rolled last because everybody was so gung-ho, you've been <laughs> split up from the group. Okay. okay? Oh. There are several walkers <clears throat> that have not noticed you. Uh, they're going for the other three. You know, basically, you're about to go. You realize the group's not there. And a zombie basically walks past you and doesn't notice you because you oh, got your pet walker. It's in between. Right? And then I now there's a couple it. of them between you and them, and your zombie's kind of standing there just shambling uh you like hold your breath and the one walker just walks past you doesn't even look at you and is going for the group so you're split up uh or separated at least so uh what do you guys do you got yeah one turn here to do something before so it's you. one zombie in between me and the others there's a couple now there's oh, only there's one that now. walked past you but there's there's less than five not many, but... Uh, I will direct the others with a leadership to kill, kill them with the, the knives. No guns. Uh, okay, give me yeah. a leadership roll. <laughs> yeah. Oh boy, two successes. <laughs> okay, you can give uh, two extra dice to one person or one dice to two people, your choice. I guess I'll give one to each uh, Glenn and Carol. Yeah, and you guys probably don't see Michonne right now because she's probably like taking a second to like hide behind a wall when she runs. She's split up. Um, so you guys get a bonus dice, Carol and Glenn, if you guys decide to do something, as in fight the zombies. All right. Uh, however, uh, Gabriel, you uh, as you do this, you're backing up to like get away. You back up into a car. And the alarm oh, starts going off. Oh, yeah. god damn it. Yes. It's pistol that is, time. That is going to increase the swarm size as more zombies start coming out from hiding or making their way up the ramp. You can see a couple heads making their way up the ramp towards the oh, second floor. You told floor. me this wasn't like Left 4 Dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, they're not running and there's no tank. So, yeah. are getting a car tossed at them. Hey, Chris. Um, so. Depending on where we're at, let me know if this is possible. Would it be possible for me to actually get to the top of the limo and maybe shoot from the top of it? Oh, yeah. You guys are right next to the barricade. You guys can easily climb over 
I mean, it'll take a roll because most of these are trucks and stuff, and because they're double parked, you know, it's not just like slide, like you can't Dukes a Hazard slide over the hood because there's like two cars next to each other. And she's probably parked them in such a way to make it hard to actually climb through. Uh, but you can climb under or over. Uh, you guys can try to do that. And then once you're within the ring, it's going to be a lot harder for the walkers to get to you because they're going to have to probably crawl under if they realize what to do. Otherwise, they're trying to just like stand there and, you know, walk, uh, through, two, okay, walk yeah. through two trunks, which isn't really going to happen. So we should probably go to the ring then. <laughs> Yeah, so I'm going to do exactly what you said, Chris. I'm going to dukes a hazard over the top of those cars. <laughs> and I'm going to just get into a fire position and start firing on these non-humans. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, uh, you will do a, f a mobility to do that. Uh, what are the other... Well, Gabriel, you're shouting... Not shouting. You're telling them, like, kill them. Right. Uh, Glenn? Glenn, knowing he has... Glenn, knowing he has no weapons, is going to vault into the over the barricade and try and get into the limo to see if there's anything in there to help them. Okay, so the two of you, please give me mobility tests as you leave the father defenseless by himself. <laughs> He's got his faith to protect him. Yeah, I do. Gun? It's true. I do have a gun, but I was... It's okay. I'm oh, gonna let this happen. Whoa. Okay, so Glenn there we go. hazards his way over the entire <laughs> barricade. Yeah, he shows me uh, up. Yeah, where Carol's like, uh, well, them Glenn slowly boys. Slowly crawling over. Yeah. Me osteoporosis. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we hear a few bones cracking. Yeah. Um, the two of you I make have... it over. Glenn, you get to the uh, the uh, limo, and the door is locked. You're probably able to try like two or three doors, and they're all locked. Hmm. Uh. The sunroof. It's <clears throat> closed. Oh. Oh, it's closed. It was closed. Um. Bash I think he would take the butt of the gun and uh, drive it into the probably the the rear window, like the okay. pa the passenger window. All right, uh, Michonne, what are you doing? You see two of them hop over the barricade. Yeah, zombies I'm kind of watching the zombies. And you so, can see Gabriel is about to get swarmed by a few of them. Yeah, whatever the zombie is closest to me, since, like, they're both facing, like, away, I'm just going to sneak okay. attack. Yeah, give me a give me a combat roll with your sword. <laughs> it's a katana. Your sword. Uh, it's actually a katana that I got from a 16th century suit of Japanese armor. Okay. <laughs> I got it from the mall. Uh, they sold it for $150, <laughs> and then I took it to my dad's uh, edge grinder, and I made it sharp. <laughs> All right. So, Gabriel, there's, like, four zombies closing in on you. You realize you're by yourself, and then all of a sudden you hear, shink, shink, and two of them just go down. And you see Michonne doing what she does best, cleaning house. Blood splashes across you or in what? a nice sword arc. Uh, however, there are still two zombies there that you will uh, need to uh, deal with um, okay. in the next round. So next round, uh, they are going to be close enough to attack you, uh, Gabriel. So I need you to make a roll to avoid getting attacked. And because there are two of them, uh, I'm going to say whatever roll you make, please reduce your dice pool by one. Okay, okay. Um, let's we see. probably see more of the cowardly Gabriel that we see when he first gets introduced to the show, where he's still terrified of walkers. Yeah. And, like, unsure how to defend himself. Uh, so, he, his talent is guarded by a higher power. Uh, you, were, <laughs> <laughs> you were saved against all odds. So, seeing four zombies <laughs> walking towards me, and, you know, God sent Michonne to save me. Like I knew he would. Um, the description is when you roll a random die to see if you are hit or bitten, you may reroll once. Uh, is that <clears throat> for this? I believe that is when there's a random roll to determine who is hit or bitten. Ah, uh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Well, um, he's going to try to like duck around some of the corners of the cars and like hide his way away from them. Um, All right, stealth or mobility, your choice. Yeah, it'll be stealth, and then minus one. Oh, 
Three successes. Okay. All right. You instinctively drop to the ground and try to crawl under one of the, uh, try to crawl under one of the cars. Nice. Uh, as you do, you get out from under the car. So you're you're in the the circle now. But as you're about to get out from under the second car, your pants leg is caught on something underneath the car, and the zombies start crawling under to come towards you. Uh, so everybody else can act. Michonne, you see the two zombies go after him, and Carol and Glenn. Glenn, you've smashed open the window, uh, but the two of you can act as well, so the three of you can still go. I'm just hearing two defenseless zombies. That's what I'm hearing right now. Yeah. <laughs> Basically, yeah. yeah. What's the kind of can do attitude I need on this? Business? I'll even give you a bonus dice because they, right. they really don't know. They're prone and everything. Exactly. Coup de gras, right? <laughs> All right. All right. So once again, you hear a thunk, thunk, and uh, they're dead. Those zombies are dead. I love it. Uh, Karen, what are you doing? Are you shooting yourself? Is that what's going on here? <laughs> well, um, do I. I was going to like shoot over the top of the cars, but since I see now Gabriel's in the circle, do I notice yeah. the zombies going underneath the car? Yeah, you see them like drop down to crawl after him. Okay, then uh, I would try to shoot the ones that are crawling underneath the car. Okay. Uh, so you and Michonne kill the fuck out of one of those zombies. Uh, and then Michonne kills the other one. Um, but you realize that was your last bullet. Oh. Click, click. Uh, zombies are all dead. I'm going to drop this back down to one threat level. Uh, Glenn, you've smashed open the window. You can see there is a bit of stuff inside. You're able to unlock the door, obviously, from uh, from in there. Let's see. Okay. Where is her stuff? Okay. So you find a bit of a stash in here. You find a total of 10 rations of food. Damn. You find a pair of knives, a machete, two pistols, a Holy pair of walkie-talkies that are missing batteries, you find an axe, a shotgun, two bottles of booze, and five blood-stained backpacks. Oh. You also see in here, clearly she was using this as a place to sleep. There is like a pillow and a couple blankets or bed sheets set up on one of the, the long side uh, couches. At this point, you also can hear from up above, you can hear the sounds of gunfire and shouting from up on the third floor. Yeah, we need to get up there. <laughs> yeah, we left him for a little while, but everyone can get like a gun or a weapon now. Yeah. Yeah, I'll Toss take... Uh, yeah. <laughs> um, I'll take... Um, we still a... have the sniper rifle as well. Yeah. I think that's so all two you. Two pistols and a sniper. Yeah, whoever's I'll good take... at range. Oh yeah, whoever's yeah. Um, I'm okay at range, yeah. but I'll take whatever's left over. I have zero in range, so I'm not good at it. So you three get guns. Okay, That's fine. sounds good. Yeah, okay. I'll grab a pistol. I'll take a. I'll, I'll take a the machete though. I'll take machete. a pistol, and uh, maybe <clears throat> one of maybe that axe. All right, the There's... axe in the in the inventory is the small axe. Yeah. And the machete would count as mm. They don't have separate rules for a machete. Big axe? <laughs> also small axe? Yeah, also small would I, axe, yeah. Um I mean, would I be able to say that like I just found ammo for the pistol, like it's similar make and model. Yeah, extra clip in it. Yeah, yeah I would okay. say uh, we can use. The, I mean, I imagine the small axe is like Rick, Rick's hatchet that he had for most mm -hmm. of the series. Um, okay. And then big axe is like some of the stuff like the kingdom were using. Yeah, you know, like actual like weapons. Um, machete. I would say either use this. Well, they already have two knives. I would say use the stats for a sword. Okay. Otherwise, they would just have three knives, right? Like, right. <laughs> yeah. 
Or, it's I don't know, give us rules for a machete? You can do that, too. Yeah, guys. Give us, the, give us the rule for a fucking rifle butt, but not a fucking machete. No, that works. Okay. And you uh, say there was a shotgun left over? Yes, there is a shotgun. That's huge. All right, I'll, I'll take that then if no one else wants it. All you. Dude, shotgun is OP. Okay, well, you guys load up. Yep. Grabbing all the shit out of this lady's stash. What do you do next? <laughs> well, since I don't have a strap on my scabbard or my katana, I take my, like, Jansport backpack, and I zipper it just, like, closed. So it just <laughs> is on here, and now it's on my backpack. I'm like, it's back. Okay. <laughs> all right, I dig it. Uh, go back up the stairwell yep. and um, kill those other humans unless they give us all the medicine they have. You know, I would want to be saved if I was trapped in a... All right. Mm -hmm. So when you guys get up here, uh, you make your way back up the stairwell, you open the doors. As you do, you can see that they are... Um, they have finished off most of the zombies around the uh, ambulance. And you can see the last few that were probably chilling by the door have made their way, are kind of intermittently making their way over there, but they're going to be pretty easy pickings for these people. Uh, you see there's a group of, I believe it's four? Let me double check. No, that's not it. The Golden Ambulance. Uh, so, uh, Travis, you're pretty good at manipulation, right? Yeah, there's four. You see four people. Yeah. Uh, convince them that we're trying to help. And that we just need that medicine. <clears throat> they can join us. Yeah. <laughs> Safety in numbers. Mm -hmm. I... Yeah, so um, as we make our way up there, we see that they're fighting off. I'll yell out to that group. Don't shoot. We'll help them fight them off. We'll help you fight them off. Um... Okay, give me a uh, manipulation test, please. Okay. Um, so I do have a talent that says innocent face. Uh, you, I don't know if this is, if I can do this. Cause it says you made someone believe you were weak. Uh, you get plus two on manipulation when you act innocent in front of a stranger, even though I just, we just killed someone. We I mean, were like innocent to them. They yeah. might not have seen it though. Cause keep in mind, they were in the ambulance surrounded by walkers. Mm -hmm. So I, you can use it. That's fine. Okay. And then we'll roll. Oh, no. Well, it's only uh, one. Only I, don't one? Know if I, should, I don't know if I should push that. Never hurts to push, right? It's not like yeah, you can panic to... in this game. I, yeah. I do believe that more successes is helpful in this situation. Okay, I'm going to try and push it then. Go, go, go. There That's we go. We want four. Oh. Ooh, unstoppable. Okay, I'm going to put their tokens out here just so we got the group of them. For some reason, they don't give art to the others, which is kind of annoying. But Make sure I put all the right ones. I, I just realized I should have left them labeled so I could tell who's who. Okay. All right. Uh, they see you running, like, towards them, and uh, you see the the man with this big beard he like puts a hand up to like acknowledge you and between the eight of you these last half dozen walkers do not stand a chance and you guys are easily able to overwhelm them and dispatch them uh, plus the walkers attention is mostly on the, the four of them uh, so you're able to easily sneak up behind them and, and probably take them out with uh, without even having really burn any ammunition so you guys uh, deal with that pretty easily. Nice. S since it's um, so easy, can I replenish my like <laughs> one of my missing zombies? Like just chop, chop. I think that'll take a Please? roll just because you have to do all the chopping. But if you want to give me a, uh, I'd say either a stealth or a, yeah, I think a stealth roll. Oh, no, not a stealth. How about survival? Okay. 
do I get bonus for my katana? Since the katana has a bonus of two, right? Yeah, you can take a bonus, that's fine. Okay. Oh well. <laughs> Not it, a single it, it dies instead, whatever. Yeah, you're too you're too enthusiastic and you just you go to slice you're like gonna be all cool and I'm just gonna slice the jaw off and it's just the whole top it's of the, the head. Whole head. Yeah. <laughs> Man, you've been having it rough tonight. I mean I am the unluckiest man in the world, I should tell you. <clears throat> but to everyone else, it looks like Michonne just fucking aced in the zombie like nobody's business. So, because you didn't okay. mess up. <laughs> I'll play cool, you know? Yeah. That's yeah. what I meant to happen. You know, the head comes right off. It's like one slice, right? <clears throat> Natural. So, they're a little surprised when you walk up and you have a zombie on a chain, but because of uh, Carol's amazing manipulation <laughs> role, uh, they don't, like, aim their guns at you or anything, and uh, they they thank you. There's, so there's a man... Uh, there's two men and two women. Um, you see that, uh, is any information on these people? Okay, yeah. So the, uh, the man that you see, he's clearly the leader of the group. Uh, he's an older man, looks like maybe 40s or 50s. Uh, he's got a fairly large beard, kind of blondish graying hair at this point. He's got a plaid shirt with a simple, uh, little vest over that, like a dark vest. And then um, there's three others with him. Um, one of them, uh, the male, a uh, little bit uh, more on the, the skinny side, uh, about Glenn size. You know, he's not a big guy. Looks like he's probably pretty quick on his feet. Short black hair and um, rather nondescript, to be honest. Uh, the other two, uh, there's a woman who is wearing like um, a dark uh, overcoat, almost like a trench coat uh, sort of thing. Um, you're not sure how when it's so fucking hot out here, but she seems to uh, to be okay with it. She looks like she's seen some shit. Um, you know, she's got like fingerless gloves. Her gear looks a lot more worn than the others of them. Uh, she looks like she's, you know, uh, decked out. She's got a rifle on her back. And you see there's a knife tucked in her boot. And um, the man you're talking to, he's got just, uh, looks like a small knife in, in his belt. And he's got a pistol. Uh, the man, the other guy, he's got a, an axe. And you can see he's got on his, uh, maybe on his side or on his back, uh, what looks like a little med kit. And then the fourth person is another woman. Um... She looks older as well, maybe in her in her mid forties. Uh, she's got long brown hair that's pulled up in a ponytail, uh, kind of uh, frizzled, kind of uh, not straight, you know, all crinkled. And um, she looks a little bit more built. Um, you know, she looks kind of strong. She's actually uh, got over her shoulder. She's got a sledgehammer, and then she's got a pistol uh, tucked in uh, in her pants. And uh, the man says to you all, he says, uh, Oh, thanks. Uh, thanks for the assist. Appreciate it. I thought we were goners once that uh, that woman started firing. I mean, of course, by, by the time we heard the music, we thought that maybe someone may in, be in trouble. Yeah, when we, uh, we got up here, that means she turned the music on, and next thing we knew, we were surrounded. It's like, did you, did you, did you deal with her? Is she. He's and dead. Uh, <laughs> it was self-defense, and I'll point to Glenn. She shot my friend. <clears throat> like, what the yeah, hell? He's still bandaged, yeah. <laughs> you see the the woman yeah. with the. Uh, um, the woman with the fingerless gloves, she says, uh, well, good riddance to her then. You know, you're not, no, no skin off our back. She wasn't our friend. She fired on us first, so clearly she's trying to trap us. And, uh, the man, um, he says, you want me to take a look at that? And he points to your wound, Glenn. Uh, are you qualified? Uh, yeah, I was, I was, a, I was a nurse before all this went to hell. Well, uh, would you 
listen we come from a community that's suffering horribly right now we we could use medicine we could use someone like you listen i'm new to this group but these are some pretty darn good people uh you say they all kind of look to the older man and uh you can see he kind of shifts his weight to to one side and uh he says, uh, well, we're we're part of a group, too. We were actually sent to get supplies. Um, we we were given this lead on this ambulance, so they sent us out here to check it out. Uh, and we're going to we're going to be in a lot of trouble if we don't get back. But do you guys have medicine there? Uh, you see, they all kind of again look at him, and you know he looks back at the ambulance, and you know he's kind of like chewing his low, lower lip a little bit. He's like, uh, "Yeah, I mean, there's actually stuff in there, believe it or not. She didn't leave it empty. I, we just need something that can help with pneumonia. I mean, if you guys need to take everything else, that's I, at this point, I think that's fine. We just need the, the stuff to, for pneumonia. You being a nurse, you might know what that is." You see the the older man, you can see his attitude shifts a little bit. Um, and you see he's kind of got like his hand like on his waist, like near his gun. Um, but you see the the nurse and uh, the construction worker, the lady with the, the sledgehammer. Um, he's like, yeah, yeah I, I, I know what you guys would need. And, and the woman says, well, I she's like, she's like, she's like, Bert, come on. They they help this out. You know, it's. They're gonna let us take the rest of the truck. Come on, just a few things, right? And she looks to the the nurse. She says, "Right, Mike." And he's like, "Yeah, just um." He's like, "It wouldn't be much." He's like, "He's like, they, they're not gonna know, you know." And uh, Bert looks back over to him. He's like, "He's like, you guys know what's gonna happen if if Merle finds out." And like, how's he gonna find out? He doesn't know what the hell was in here. It could have been empty for all he knew. I'm going to need you guys to give me a manipulation test. Somebody, uh, if you want to try to convince them. Uh, you every, Whoever makes the test, the rest of you can assist. Uh, you, normally, uh, when you do an assist, just like an alien, up to three people can assist, and each assist gives you a bonus die. Yeah, I think it's pro probably Carol. I mean, I've, I've got six dice in that total, but you rolled them like eight or something. Yeah, as long as I could use the talent, it would be eight. Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, and I'll assist, so you get an extra one for me. Okay. This will be opposed against this guy. But, uh... Does assisting require a roll? Nope. You just basically say that you're going to do it, and then uh, as long as it makes sense. I think at this point, everybody's pleading their case. You guys are all trying yeah. to say something here. Okay, so... Yeah. Ooh, yeah. But do you want to push? <laughs> Are you happy with four? I mean, I I don't want to like mess up and uh, and do something bad. I think four should. Yeah, that was an amazing roll. Yeah, yeah that's a good roll. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, so what do you what do you say to him, Carol? What is your plea here? Try to convince him. Like. Look, our, our people are back home. They're very desperate. They're sick. They're dying. If there's anything that you could do to help us, we'd be greatly appreciated. And I actually have some extra rations on me. I'd be willing to trade these rations to you for the, the medicine. Uh, you see, yeah, uh... Glenn would actually offer the revolver. All right, so you see he's kind of thinking it, mulling it over, and the other three are kind of like, at least the Mike and, and the construction worker, they're like trying to convince him. The the chick with the fingerless glove, she's not saying much. You can tell she's kind of like standing off to the side. You're getting a bit of a Michonne vibe from her, like she seems to be the loner of the group. Um, she's kind of just got her arms crossed, she's kind of watching this all go down. And the other two are like, like come on, Mike, that, or come on, Burke, that's a good deal. Like, we, we can always use food, right? Like, Look, Merle will probably be more happy if we bring back, like, a whole truck and food, right? Like, yeah, we went above and beyond, see? Uh, and then, you know, the woman's kind of pitching him the same idea. 
And when you hand him the gun, Glenn, you hand it to him, he uh, he looks at it, and he, you know, he takes it in his hand, and he's kind of like, you know, checking the weight and stuff, and he, he pops it open. You can tell he knows the way around a gun, and he, he pops it open, and he sees there's no bullets left, and he, he flips it back, and he looks at you, and he's like, um, all right, young man, you got yourself a deal. I think, uh, considering everything that's happened, nobody else needs to die today, so... Yeah. Mike, hook them up with what they need, and let's get the hell out of here. And uh, so Mike goes in the back, and he gets you guys some uh, uh, some some medicine, and he, like, explains, you know, what it is, in case you guys really don't know. I think, Carol, you have some medical skills, so you have a basic idea, but he tells you, you know, whatever it is, antibiotics or, you know, a shot or something. And, uh... Um... As you guys are they're starting to pack up and load up, you see Burke hops into the driver's seat. Uh, the woman whose name he didn't get, she hops into the, the passenger seat. Uh, Mike gets in the back, starts closing up some of the uh, uh, the windows on the cabinets, you know, gathering up some supplies. And the woman with the sledgehammer, <clears throat> she uh, offers a hand. She introduces herself as Lana and uh, kind of out of earshot of everybody. Uh, she takes uh, you to the side, Carol, and she says, um, look, we're from a place called Woodbury. And she's like, um, maybe, uh, um, you know, maybe we can figure something out between our two communities. And she, you know, basically tries to set up a time and a date when you guys can meet somewhere like nearby that's not in other community in hopes that maybe you guys can broker some sort of deal or, or peace. But you can tell she seems uh, legit and like one of the more tack turn people of the group. Uh, they all seem a little distrustful at first, obviously, but uh, Carol does a good job putting their, their fears to rest. And you can see she seems sincere when she tries to offer, uh, you know, the olive branch, so to speak. Well, I'll, I'll go to shake her hand and like, that'd be <clears throat> fantastic. She says, all uh, right. Help another. Great. All right. Well, I'll see you in a week then. And uh, at that point, she like bangs on the back of the uh, uh, the the door to the uh, ambulance as she loads up. And she gives you guys a smile and a nod. She closes the door. And ambulance starts to go down the, uh, the ramp. And I think that's about a good enough time to call our little scenario a success here. So, God damn, we're kings! Great. <laughs> look at that! You 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 got you some stuff. You didn't kill everybody. Uh, fought a few zombies. We didn't get to roll on the zombie attack table though. I was really, really hoping somebody would die. Good. But you know, <laughs> too bad. It's too bad. Why don't we make one roll just to see? Yeah, uh, let's see let Gabriel it. take it. Maybe, <laughs> maybe God will protect him. Okay, so there is a. Is there a table? Let me see. Walker, Walker attack table. Here we go. Oh boy, it is a D sixty six. Obviously, high is bad, low is good. Twelve. Zombie chases after you. Get away, but must make a mobility roll to not stumble and fall. If you fail, <laughs> you hit your head on something sharp and take two points of damage. Wow. Oof. That's okay. Uh, wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Right. I don't know about you guys, but I think I only have like three health or something. Everybody, yeah. all humans have three health in this game. Oh, okay. Which Gabriel is now battered. Of, but uh, yeah, there you have it, folks. That is a little bit of The Walking Dead by Free League. So well done, guys. I didn't have to hand out any stress. You guys did it all yourself. Thank you. <laughs> you did hand out us. one when we hit <clears throat> that that uh, threat three. That wasn't me. That was the game. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, that's a rule. Okay. Okay. I'm here to enforce those rules. All right. Cool. Well, uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, Travis and Joe, thank you for joining the cast tonight. It's been great Thanks for having me, you guys. Joe, yeah, great, great to finally play again. It's been way too long. Good for, stuff, guys. Uh, yeah. yeah I'll, let, I'll let you guys know when we got another opening. If you guys want to join us, there is more Walking Dead in the future. I'm sure of it at some point. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. It was really cool. <clears throat> yeah, we, it's, we got good shit here, man. So cool. Well, uh, listeners, that's all we got for tonight. So next week... 
uh, as in the next week after you hear this, uh, we will be back to Blade Runner with Kyle, Sean, the Frog, and Tyler, a.k.a. LaVolpe, is returning, and we're going to return to the rain-soaked streets of L.A., and jump back into Blade Runner with the second uh, cinematic, Fiery Angels, which uh, if you haven't listened to the first one, go back and listen to it. I've actually listened to it again myself, guys, just to reiterate everything that happened. Easily, I think, our best thing that we've run so far on the channel. Really, 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 really enjoyed oh. it. It's, it's I, the thing I've enjoyed listening to the most so far. Okay, um, I'll just go back and listen. Hey, the right. inner party drama uh, was was fantastic. It was really good. So, highly recommend it. Um, I think it's even better than our alien stuff, to be totally honest. So, anyhow, yeah. that's all we got for you tonight, folks. So, we will see you on the flip side next week. Blade Runner, same time, same place. The 99.